Ready? I'd like to call the uh, May meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission to order. Paula, would you call the roll? Alan Brown. Present. Jeffrey Parks. Present. Suzanne Broadbent. Present. Heather Clemmer. Present. Neela Crank Clements. Present. Greg Eddington. Present. George Massey. Present. Mary Jo Meacham. Present. Ann Zacharitz. Present. You have a quorum. Okay. And so we want to uh, welcome our new member, Suzanne Broadbent. Down here. Thank you. Welcome to the commission. <clears throat> I'd like to go over the uh, procedures of on the back of the uh, first cover page for the agenda. Um, the chairman will announce each case and ask interested parties to indicate their presence by raising their hand. Commissioners will discuss details of the case, calling on staff for details. Following this discussion, commissioners may choose to ask questions of parties present. Interested persons may speak to support or protest the application. The applicant will be entitled to one brief rebuttal. Interaction between applicant and protestants on the floor is not permitted. Persons speaking are asked to approach the center podium one at a time and to introduce themselves by name and address and to present their position as succinctly as possible. The commission asks each speaker to limit his or her remarks to no more than five minutes. Following the public hearing on an application, the commission will take one of the following actions. One, approve the certificate of appropriateness. Two, continue the proposal. Three, deny the proposal with prejudice, which means the app application may not be resubmitted for at least one year unless the commission determines that circumstances have changed. And four, or, or four, deny the proposal without prejudice, which means the applicant may reapply at any time. When an application has been approved and after a 10-day protest period has expired, the historic preservation officer will mail the CA to the applicant. City construction permits cannot be issued until a CA has been issued. <clears throat> Contact HP staff for final design review inspection or to withdraw items that will not be completed. And finally, any person agreed by a decision granting or denying a CA may appeal to the Oklahoma City Board of Adjustments. All appeals shall be made within 10 days. Okay, and also if you would uh, silence your cell phones, everybody, including the commission. Uh, we'll go on to item two, the, uh, from the Office of the Historic Preservation Officer. Katie? Um, the June, so this, is, this will be the last time we announce this, that the June 2016 Historic Preservation Commission meeting is actually being held on May 25th so that the commission members can attend the statewide historic preservation conference, which falls on our normal June meeting date. The deadline for application um, to be heard on that meeting was April 26th, so those applications have already been received. Um, and then after the June meeting, we'll go back to our normal routine. Uh, the Statewide Preservation Conference is June 1st through 3rd in Enid. Um, we have several commission members that are going to be attending, staff is attending, um, and that's open to the general public, to anyone interested, and it's um, hosted by the State Historic Preservation Office and Enid Main Street. So there's um, more information on their websites about that event. And then just another note that we still have our survey up for the preservation plan. If you haven't already taken it, please go take the survey. Let us know what you think. Um, and then one that didn't make it on the agenda but I wanted to announce is that we've partnered up with um, Urban Land Institute Oklahoma to pay for Donovan Ripkema to come and present the findings of a study on the economic impact of historic tax credits in Oklahoma. Um, here in Oklahoma City on May 16th. It's a free event, but you do have to register in advance, and you can go to ULI's website to find out more about that event. Okay, thank you. That should be interesting and timely. Okay, item three, acceptance of the minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any comments on the minutes or motion? Move to accept. Second. Said. Neela? Mm -hmm. It's moved by Jeff Parks and seconded by Neela Crank Clements. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, minutes are accepted. And then we, item four, the code enforcement report. Hello? Anybody have any questions? Welcome. Any questions today? Inspector Cobb with the City of Oklahoma City Code Enforcement. Inspector, I have a question about 620 Northwest 18th. It says there's a first inspection and the description is special case. What does special case mean? And that is on page three of 10, uh, the third property listed. Uh, 
620 Northwest 18th Street. Yes. The work has been progressing on the property and it no longer warrants a citation being issued. There were three citations issued. So we special cased it as there's not enough visible damage on property maintenance to issue another citation. So it's just a way to close out the property maintenance. Okay, process. so it's been closed out. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I had a question about 617 Northwest 19th Street. 617. There's a, there's a huge long list of, of things that are evidently going on. I wonder if you could sort of. Which page is that, Jeff? It's on page 7 of 10. So kind of yeah, come up, what's I, going on I know there? the property quite well. Uh, well, it looks like you do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. A couple of things. Whenever somebody calls in a code violation as a dilapidated structure or an unoccupied, it has to be reissued under dilapidated and historic preservation. So I have to special case close those in duplicate order. Anything else? Wow. Uh, the property, the owner of the property applied for a certificate of appropriateness for changes that were made previously. We'll need another one, but at, at the time, the, prop, the rear structure of that house is being worked as dilapidated and historic preservation, and it's been issued citations for property maintenance. And right at the moment, there's nothing going on with the property. Okay. So, in addition to all of the, the problems with it, when it gets reported as dilapidated and then transferred over to historic preservation, dilapidated, there's yeah. it adds to the list of the, the case numbers generate a new case. It's, gotcha. it's a different process for historic preservation than it is anywhere else in the city. Naturally. <laughs> okay. I wanted to just note in case as people are using this report, you'll see under case number C16, da 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 da, and that's code enforcement's case number for tracking these. That's not the citation number, which is something that you can search through the municipal courts on the city's website. You search it the same way you would a traffic ticket or anything like that. So many of these you'll see do not have a citation number because they haven't reached that point yet, but some of them you do have a citation number and that should be searchable. So just to clarify, Good. tell me if I'm completely incorrect. <laughs> Citations are searchable under the municipal court site. Yeah. Okay, uh, the violation numbers are the numbers starting with the C and then the year. And so okay. There's a difference between violations Good to know. 304 Northwest 22nd Street. That is the White House. It's under uh, in progress, right? 304. I think that's 304. If you recall. Uh, 304 is 311 is the White House on Northwest 22nd. 304 wow. is across the street. It's a brick. Oh, okay. House that. So nothing on 304. We have. I mean, that's. Work in progress there, I think. Yeah, they're doing some roof repair on 304. 311, I notified them of the need for a certificate of appropriateness once they start their restoration process. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Well, thank you. Right, thank you. And. Item five, continuance announcements. Uh, we Let's have uh, one request for continuance to continue to July 6th. Um, they just haven't finalized all their documentation for some window um, repairs, replacements at this property. It is HPCA 16-00024. Okay. So that does need a, a motion to, yep. So moved. Second. Been moved by Neil Crank Clemens and second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, continued. Public hearings, lamplight <laughs> structures, none. National Register, none. Nope. Consent docket. Anybody like to consider any of these separately? Or is there a motion for approval of the consent docket? Move to approve the consent docket. Second. Moved by Jeff Parks and seconded by Neela Crank Clements. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, consent docket is approved. On to D. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, if you're on the consent docket, you've been approved and you're free to go. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> uh, item for individual consideration, HPCA 15-00204 at 2820 North Robinson Avenue, Jefferson Park, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of David and Rosemary Jackson for certificate of appropriateness to one, replace all exterior doors required, two, rebuild existing windows required, three, reconstruct rear wall required, and four, replace flat roof with metal elective. Okay, applicants present? No? Okay, any questions, comments? I have a question, and I maybe Katie yep. or Angela, you know. They're proposing to rebuild the back wall, fill it in with OSB. Are they proposing to leave the window openings that were once there? I do not believe that they've proposed any changes to the window openings. So our understanding is yes, that those would remain. Okay. And you want to continue because of the, they were proposing a metal roof for the flat roof? Yes. What other, have they suggested, talked about any polymer roof or bitumen, bitumen, however that is pronounced? Um, let me see. That would be more appropriate, I would think. Yes, I think the Sanborns probably indicate what um, yeah, presumed historic roof would have been tar and gravel, so a material like that. That would be the what modern version. Any see, modern yes. version, yeah. correct? Yeah. Katie, has the applicant approved the conditions that you've set for items one through three? Um, or Angela? Angela, do you know on, on um, 2820 Northwest, um, North Robinson, have they agreed to those conditions that we've proposed? That was that the brick be reinstalled and mortar match color and composition of the original. Um, I'm asking because if they haven't, I would assume we might want to continue the whole packet. I would. During initial submittal of the application, the owner did indicate that they do plan to reinstall the brick. They plan to reinstall the brick using a recipe that is consistent with that around the rest of the house. They indicated that they are reinstalling the existing historic windows, which are being saved inside the house, that they plan to match all of the existing historic trim work. I simply do not have any further documentation for any of that. So we need that documentation. Yes. yes. Okay. Angel, have, have you met with or talked with the owner since the last time? No, ma'am, I've had yes. no response from them. So, okay, they have not appeared. Have they, have they ever appeared before the commission to answer questions? No, they have not. Do they have another continuance available? I'm sorry? Do they have another continuance available? Or have they exhausted? One. Yes. They have one? So it seems like maybe we should continue this. I've, I've Unless idea. anyone has any other thoughts. Okay, to what date, Katie or So the, technically the next meeting is May 25th. I think we would, staff would prefer that we not continue anything to that date. Sure, um, sure. Uh, so July 6th. Okay, and I move to continue HPCA 15-00204 to July 6th meeting. Second. So moved by Neela Crank Clements and second by Ann Zachritz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, item has been continued. Next. HPCA 16-00011 at 529 Northwest 24th Street, Paseo Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of Floyd Simon and Corrine Marie for certificate of appropriateness to one, replace windows elective, two, install back deck elective, three, construct rear addition elective, four, relocate window from rear to side elective, five, demolish garage elective, six, construct garage elective, and seven, install paving at garage and backyard elective. Chairman, I need to abstain from this. Is the applicant present? There he is. Would you state your name and, and also sign the... Uh, Floyd Simon, 900 Northwest 16th. 
All right, thank Actually, you. the representative now, the uh, there's a change in ownership since the application was applied for, and I submitted that to you. Yep, we've, we've made a nice little clean switch with new application form, new owner signature, all of that. It just happened between the time when they applied and um, it coming to you. So Rita said it's okay. <laughs> well, as long as Rita says. Okay, thank you. Lloyd, do you know um, if the, the current owner wishes to, would, would be comfortable with doing two, installing two single garage doors rather than the one, because that is a condition? If that uh, was necessary, yes. Okay. <clears throat> As a historic homeowner with one car garage door, um, I feel, I don't know how strongly the commissioner of the guideline is, but one door is preferable to me because you can angle two cars easier than if you have to go in straight with both of them. Just a thought. I'm reading um, guideline 4.4.21. It says that double garages, two single garage vehicle doors should be used instead of one larger double door. I think that's where staff base their recommendation on. Um, this will maintain the scale and rhythm of older structures in the neighborhood. I would prefer that there be two doors for that reason. Any other thoughts? What's the size of the garage again? I don't have the exact size. It's 20 by 22.5. It's right at 450 square feet. What's the width of the front? 22 and a half. That's the 22 and a half. Right. So. Okay. On the floor plan, right where it should be. How about that? <laughs> Good job. Especially with it so close to the street and so very visible, I you know, the, so the double too. door, this two yeah. single doors makes a significant. Yeah. And if the applicant difference. is um, agreeing to that, yeah. I think it might be a better choice. I would agree. And that is wide enough to do it, so right. based on your diagrams. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What else? So the deck was also in question because of its size and visibility. I think it uh, would be behind a fence. I don't know if that was on the original application. What kind of fence is that? Most likely a six-foot cedar. It, there, there's a diagram I know in the packet. So have you asked for approval of a fence? So I, th I think with the, new fans. the last version of everything that came in, we had <coughs> requests just to remove the chain link and hadn't specified the new fence to go back in, although there had been, it had been discussed that yeah. it would be a, a site-proof fence. I think there's a, there is a diagram in the packet, at least the one I saw online, that, that showed kind of where we would put the fence back, and it would be a, a six-foot cedar. Okay. The site plan shows a... Oh, there is a drawing, um, the drawing that shows the south elevation ah. of the garage shows um, fencing. Yeah, I don't think it was originally uh, on there. There it is. Well, it definitely would screen the deck. Yeah, that shows it really well. We would meet the setbacks off of the sidewalk also. But we 
we're not. Right. The, the fence was not um, right. noticed and wasn't included on the agenda, so we can't right. approve a fence right now. Um, but if it's approval of the deck is contingent on a fence <laughs> screening it. Katie, the fence could be administratively approved, possibly, and the and, deck. Um, a, Angela, chime in if I'm wrong. A deck can, a deck that is not visible from the public right of way, can be administratively approved. Okay. So, if it's yeah under six feet, in is, height. and this is under six feet, right? So that wouldn't be too, put you out too much, I think. <laughs> if she can um, administratively approve those two things, possibly. Yes. We could okay. continue the deck at this point and then administratively approve it along with a fence at the same time. So, so if the there. fence is approved, then it would be administratively approved after the fence is approved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You need details of the railing too? Um, that's what I actually passed at. So we've got railing details um, oh, that I okay. think are okay. sufficient. Was, I'm sorry, yeah. I thought that was enough. Floyd, the, uh, the window that's in the proposed east addition, or the, it's on the east elevation, it's the addition on that window there. Is it designed after the existing window on the west elevation at the fireplace, so it looks like it used to be? Yes. Is it modeled after that? Is it the same size? Um, I do not know the size. I just know that uh, I, I, it's, it should be similar size and definitely the same characteristics of the uh, existing windows. Katie or Angela, we would have to know the size. Is that in the staff report and I missed it? It should be the same size as uh, the other windows. Uh, let's see. You're talking about the, the, the horizontal yes, windows uh, on either side uh, of the... The one that they're, they're proposing for the, the new addition, is it the same size as the one that's existing on the you know, I think we have the size of the proposed window. I don't think we have the size of the existing window. Uh, same, uh, same style, smaller. The addition is a bathroom, the one over the, uh, it's really not a, it's uh, the one, it's not over the fireplace, it's actually over a um, bay window, boxed window that has a buffet in it. Could you state your name? I'm sorry, Joe Meacham, 2109 Northwest. What's your relationship? I don't know. I participated in the design process okay. for the project. All right, good. I didn't realize you had stepped down. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What's your <laughs> doing down there? I asked permission. I thought I, that you heard me. Yeah. So, right. Joe, it's the same design, the same type. It's just it's just smaller. It's a smaller. fixed window. So. Okay. okay. Yes. Any more questions on the design? More comments. I have no more comments. Ready to make some motions? Okay. Okay. I move to approve HPCA 16-00011 items three and four with the specific findings that the proposed work will not have an adverse effect on the historic character of the district or property and complies with all relevant guidelines and sections of the Municipal Code 2010 as referenced in Section C of the staff report. I'll take those two first. Okay. Second. Second. All right. It's been moved by Neil Crank Clements and seconded by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Items three and four are approved. And okay. I would also move to approve HPCA 16-00011, item six, to construct garage and seven to install paving with both unique circumstances and conditions as they are listed in the staff report. Okay. Second. Moved by Nayla Crank Clements and seconded by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Okay, six and seven are approved. With unique circumstances. Can I take one, two, and five together? Or do I need to do five and one and two? Um, five needs its own motion. Okay. I move to approve HPCA 16-00011, item five, with the specific finding that the proposed work will have an adverse effect on the historic character of the district or property, but is necessary because of an imminent threat to public health and safety, and complies with all relevant guidelines and sections of the Municipal Code 2010 as referenced in Section B of the staff report. Second. Moved by Neela Crank Clements and seconded by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, item five is approved. We're going to roll. So we want to continue the deck, um, but the other is to replace windows. Katie or Angela, on the windows, um, what's the concern here? I see a specific finding. More information? That the replacement of non-historic windows. Do we need more information on that? Yeah, we need um, more thorough documentation on the replacement window. They've said it would be a wood three over one true divided light window to match remaining historic windows on the structure, but we don't have any we need dimensions drawings and, or, and drawings. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is that, is that something that uh, can be administratively approved, similar to the deck, if the fence is in, if it's, know, if it's given, or no? So it's not something we can, on our own, administratively approve. Um, if the commission felt comfortable saying, yes, these are non-historic windows, we approve replacing them with a product that meets the guidelines um, subsequent to staff review of documentation, you guys can make that call or you can ask them to come back. So you're planning on replacing them with, can you just describe? No, I think there's, uh, most of them are in good shape and they'll be, there. I think there's only, uh, and Joe would know more about the act, which ones would be uh, replaced, uh, but I think there's only, a couple, and then that's because I believe they are replaced prior to our ownership with a, a different type of window. Are those the aluminum windows? Uh, I think so. So there's only a few windows that are being replaced? Yes, there's, there's some that are in, in fine shape. And so the scope of work says that um, the um, triple sets of windows on the south elevation, so the front of the house, um, have been replaced with aluminum one over one windows. These will be replaced with three over one windows to match original windows. So be the, they'll be the same size, I would, as what was, as the good. As You're not the changing are, the opening, yeah. you're leaving the trim the same. Correct. Okay. So, we'll replace front windows and one win window at the rear. Is that correct? Correct. I think the one on the rear there might not even be a window. I think the one at the rear is actually the one that's being relocated yeah, as part of the yeah, it's in a, section uh, of the addition. Yes. So that will not be replaced. So we're talking about the front windows. Okay. Feel comfortable with that? More information? So typically we're not leaving, kind of leaving things up to staff. Um, it's kind of a burden oftentimes, so I don't know. I mean, Katie, you've kind of presented that option, yeah. but is it something you would prefer that it be brought back to the commission? I would say typically the commission has asked to see windows, particularly okay. historic windows, front of the house. Right, uh, so it's pretty prominent, probably yeah. located. Yeah. yeah. So, Floyd, I'm gonna move to continue both items. Would that be um, on the July meeting then, I assume? Well, I would, I would definitely do the deck to July because yeah. we're hoping we're going to administratively approve yes. that, so that gives you more time for that. Um, but could you have yeah. drawings on the windows and all the specifics to, to come back to the May 25th? I don't think that would. Well, Are you anxious to get going on? I, I would. I just. I, 
I would assume that uh, it'd be easier if we could get those ordered and put in. That way it's secured properly. We don't take them out, you know, and then do the rest of the property and wait two months uh, to get approval on the windows. But we can get drawings on the windows as soon as possible. So is there room on the May 25th docket, Katie? I think that deadline might have already passed. You know, yeah, I mean, we're already a week plus past the deadline to apply for that meeting, so. Um, I, but if I, it's a continuance and all we need are drawings, we couldn't make it work. Um, just another case. Just another case. <laughs> you know, I, I do, do what? Yeah, well, and the staff report's virtually done. Um, I think if we could have window documentation by Tuesday of next week, we could get that on. And, and I mean, you've got historic windows that are already there, so it's just a matter of documenting what's there and verifying that you can match it. So I'm, I'm okay with that, with May 25th. So you can have next week? Yep. Absolutely positive, last chance. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> okay, I move to continue HPCA 16-00011, item one to replace the windows to the May 25th meeting. Second. Okay, so moved, <coughs> excuse me, moved by Nita Crank Clements and seconded by Heather Clemmer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, item one is continued to okay, May 25th. Okay, one more. We'll move to, I move to continue um, HPCA 16-00011, item two, to install back de deck to July 6th meeting, right? Six. okay, thank you. Second. Moved by Nita Craig Clements and seconded by Heather Clemmer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, item two is continued to the July meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. HPCA 16-00021 <laughs> at many, many addresses on North Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, consideration and possible action on application of City of Oklahoma City maps, um, care of Brent Ward, for certificate of appropriateness to one, install guardrails at retaining walls, elective. Um, the commission reviewed a proposal to install railings along um, newly installed retaining walls along the west side of Pennsylvania Avenue and continued this um, two months ago to see some alternate designs proposed and the applicant submitted a couple of alternatives. Okay, welcome Good back. Good afternoon everyone. Uh, basically what we're going to be showing here is initially we did look at three options. The first one was the one that we recommended before and the other two options, option two is one that has the vertical elements there for the railing and then option three has the horizontal elements. And as we move on down, uh, I was able to look at, of course, one of my projects where I could <laughs> see that at the Whitewater facility, now renamed the Riversport Rapids, we have two of those actually installed, even though one is a fence that can also be installed as a railing on top of those. So. Just want to bring those two examples here today to look at. Uh, I didn't at the time of the presentation run by like I did later on to take a look at the uh, character of the existing fencing and railing that's in the neighborhood. So I did go back and take some pictures of those to, to have as a reference that we already have in the on the homes where there is railing or fencing, the same type as the option that you see there of the fence, which is a uh, the three eighths or three quarter inch I mean, railing, uh, metal railing and 18 gauge. So those are the same type of fencing that's existing on some of the homes that are there, as well as I noticed the character of the neighborhood most of the homes that do have steps that go up to the porch also use black metal railing for the steps as well as for the porch. Uh, so there's a picture right there of a, one of them on the corner. That one is 20, let's see, the one we got right now is, let's see, that picture, all right, let's go with that one. That one's 2100 Northwest 27th. That's Mr. One the Wall, the corner. just quickly, I mean, those those railings are required by code. Yes. As a way to help you up the stairs, 
Um, and I thought this when I was looking at the design, and then I read it in the staff report that the railings you're proposing are not required. Correct. They're not in a, in a location that a pedestrian would use to help themselves up um, any stairs. So I don't know, my, my just initial thought is, do we really need to add these? You know, I wanted to ask other commissioners. There's no sidewalk on the upper level. I mean, there's nothing right. where people are walking next to it. Uh, is it just? People mowing their lawn or something? <laughs> well, there was some concern in our office, especially when you look at the intersection at 25th Street. The retaining walls get rather high. And because of the narrow strip of land that will be between the fence of the homeowner and this retaining wall and the steepness of the slope, it seemed as though it would be rather risky for anyone who's up there walking on that surface. Well, that slope was there before, right? It just went yes, all the way down. Yes, it just went all the way right. down, almost to the edge of the curve. So has there been a, ne a meeting with those homeowners that this, this pr proposed fencing will? No, at the, at the time we were wondering uh, if it would be best to come here first to the commission to see if it would be appropriate before we even brought it up as a suggestion to any of the neighbors in case it wasn't deemed appropriate. Okay, Mary Jo, this I'm, is your neighborhood. It is. And you're a designer. We've, you know, we have um, walked this several times and I mean, I have different feelings, but seeing this proposal, uh, option two, um, and the way that you've presented it, it kind of, uh, it makes me think that it could be a positive in that it would give homeowners the opportunity to landscape on that other side and um, hmm. that could kind of add really to the, you know, greenery on that other side if people put bushes or climbing things on that. I can see that as a positive, um, maybe, you know, against the big wall now that we've lived with it for a while. So <laughs> uh, I did not like the first one, but I, I am kind of interested in the second one, and I, I think it is a... Um, you know, a simplified version of many of the original, you know, pieces of wrought iron that are on porches. So I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to it, but we have another shepherd person. What's your? Yes, the other shepherd person. I think actually option number two helps the concrete wall look a little more pedestrian. It helps break down the scale of that, you know, concrete wall and gives it a little bit more human scale. Um, so I, I was kind of in favor of option. Myself. So the breaks, sorry, the breaks in the fencing, the proposed fencing, would just be at the curb cuts for driveways, it looks like. Um, There's, on each one of the, well, not on all of them, the furthest north does not have a break because it's a half block. Mm -hmm. But the other two both have driveways that come in to uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I, I, like I said, I think after seeing it presented this way, it appears to be really kind of an opportunity to soften the edge and our neighborhood, particularly on the east edges, is where we've lost the most trees and landscaping. So maybe this would be an opportunity to kind of green up there. So Brent, are you proposing a simple uh, vertical picket rail like option two or the one that's shown in your River Sports Rapid? Well, the design is like the railing of option two, but I already have, Real, uh, to make it uh, simple for us, of course, in design, is I already have the cut sheets from the railing that was used there uh, at the Riversport Rapids right there. Is that what you're proposing then? Uh, that would be one, yes. What do you guys think about? Option three? So, no, well, he's image. talking about this extra, the page. Look at the it image says image. Riversport, Riversport Rapids. Sports. It's similar to option two that you thought was okay. Um, it has a double rail at the top. has a double railing at the top, and then the pole sticks up. I mean, that could be changed, like you said, if you wanted just one top rail versus okay. well, I was just two what you were that are there. I was just wondering what you were proposing. I, so. I, I, I'm, I thought that, uh, were you proposing that we could pick between two and three? Yes. Oh. No, wait a second. Sorry. We're talking about what's in your screen. But so option, sorry. option yes. 
Can yeah. Wait a second. Go back to the other one, Paula. The River Sport. That one right there. The River Sport. Yes. Right there. Oh, that one. That one versus the one that's showing option two. It's so a little different. There. different. There. So there's this product. I think either one. I, I kind of like the double rail. Okay. So either one, right? <laughs> okay. I think this is the actual product that they would install. The one that you see where it's superimposed on the image of it's the retaining wall is, is simplified. This is the actual product. This, would right, it be that, right here, that exact that one the with that the double use. top rail? Yes. <laughs> is it four okay. feet tall, the River Swart Rapids fence, four feet tall? 42 inches. 42. That one right there would be uh, four feet tall, but you know we could make it the 42 as the previous railing height was recommended, or it could be the four feet tall. Basically, we're looking at a new situation here with the city in that it's not really a guardrail, it's not really a fence, it's basically a railing that we're putting on top of the retaining wall. Well, it's functioning as a guard to keep you from falling off. True, true. guardrail, which is 42, two. though in residential it's 36, so. All right. I would stick with 42. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm good with 42. Okay. I like the River Sports one myself. I mean, I have no basis in it, but it looks a little more historic. Okay. Yep. It fits. With the two. And is this between the bars is that enough code wise for a child not to put their head through there or whatever but yes it have to be yes. <laughs> the city. no heads yes. so what are we calling that option i think in the staff report we referred to that one as option a okay yes oh option option Okay, I would make a motion to um, for HPCA 16000021 to approve option A as stated in the staff report as the guardrail for Shepherd neighborhood. Second. I don't see option A, but anyhow, it's been, approved, it's been uh, moved by Joe Meach and second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh, there it is. Okay. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The uh, guardrail has been approved, Brent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Brent. I really appreciate your effort to find us something that matched. All right. I appreciate Very the happy opportunity about it. as Thank well. You. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, Brent and I should have coordinated our labeling a little better <laughs> from good. the staff report to the Just need slides. to read things closer. Okay, next case. Okay. HPCA 16 0042 at 530 Northwest 27th Street, Paseo Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of Craig M. Davis by Joe Coffin for certificate of appropriateness to one install wood fence elective. Um, this is a, a fence that meets the guidelines for height and materials but is forward of the 40% mark so we could not administratively approve it. Um, it is forward of that mark in order to screen an existing HVAC unit um, tucked into a little niche on the side of the house, and it is facing the side street, so the property owner wanted to keep that secured behind the fence. Okay, is the applicant present? No, any comments? On Katie, on page two of eight, um, it looks like the applicant has written in 38%. Is that where it is? Is that where the fence hits? Two of eight. It says 28 linear feet, 74 total. I don't know what that is. 38%. Right. It's same. So we're we yes. super So I think they're right. Their measurements are actually off because they're measuring from the front wall of the porch okay. oh. rather than the front wall of the house. So where where are they with the new, what percentage mark, do you know? Um, I typically it's, don't tell you what percentage they're at. I'm sorry, I usually tell you okay. how far back and forth. I didn't know if I missed it. It says that it's proposed to be located 20 feet back. Yeah. The 40% mark requirement would be 27 feet. Seven feet closer. Okay. But it seems like the logical spot right. to turn the fence in, mm -hmm. especially with the mechanical equipment. Yeah. 
I would make a motion to approve HPCA 1600042 with the unique circumstances cited by staff in the staff report. Second. And moved by Joe Meacham and second by George Massey. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item is approved. Onward to. <coughs> HPCA 16 0047 at 3001 North Hudson, Jefferson Park, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of Peggy King by Brad Julian of Maverick Home Services for a certificate of appropriateness to one, replace rear deck required, two, remove rear addition required, and three, replace back door elective. So, this you'll see from the photos, this is work that um, other, well, I think even including the door now, this is work that's been completed already. Um, not realizing that they needed a CA for work on the back of the house, and so now they're um, applying for that work retroactively. So that is the deck that's proposed, that's already been constructed, that you see on your on the PowerPoint. And there was a small enclosure off the back of the house that has been removed. Okay, one, oh, it says one through three, you're recommending. Okay. Any discussion? Even though the work's been done, um, staff does find that, and I, I as well, find the materials are compatible with the guidelines. The size is nothing out of the ordinary. Um, so I would move approval unless anyone has any other thoughts. Okay. Move to approve HPCA 16-00047, items 1, 2, and 3. Second. Moved by Neil Crane Clements, second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Item has been approved. Next. HPCA 16 0048 at 524 Northwest 21st Street, Mesta Park, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application of David A. and Elizabeth J. Howell by Brian Beavers of Brian Beavers Construction for certificate of appropriateness to one replace porch columns elective. These are, there are three or four, I think, wrought iron columns that they propose to replace, um, except for the one in the center, they don't propose to go back with a column in that location. Is the applicant present? Okay, any questions, comments? So the columns will go back at the, the points where there's the big brick um, piers below, right? Yes. Okay. I would move to, unless anyone else has a question, I'd move to approve HPCA 16-00048, um, replace porch columns with the specific findings as listed in the staff report. Second. Is that Ann? Second. Moved by Jeff Parks and seconded by Ann Zachritz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item has been approved. Next. HPCA 16 0055 at 719 Northwest 20th Street, Mesta Park, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application of Samuel Stalkup and Merid Todd for certificate of appropriateness to one, install fence elective, three, install arch trellis elective, and four, construct deck elective. Okay, is this applicant present? Okay. I want to come forward and sign in. State your name. My name is Sam Stalkup at 719 Northwest 20th. Okay. Any questions? After you read the staff report, do you have any comments? Yeah. Um, I guess seems to me the conflict is between the spacing of the picket fence, the pickets and the picket fence that I propose, and also the idea that the trellis is not appropriate for the front of the house. Um, I guess I designed the fence that way because we have two dogs and 75% uh, spacing would be adequate to keep them in the yard. And also, um, I guess the idea for the fence and the trellis in that place begin with was to support um, two heirloom rose bushes that are there. So if I'm forced to move the fence back, there's not going to be a support for that rose bush. Um, 
you know, so that's, I guess, my, that's my reasoning. <clears throat> What's the r rule on the transparency of offense? 75% not including posts. So it's like 75% transparent. So yeah. is there a reason? Um, it's, it's forward of the 40% mark on the side of the house, correct? Yeah, that's that's, I basically just want to follow the, I want to just replace the chain leak fence um, with the picket fence. And there's, I guess, like a larger design. Um, and like I said, I mean, I'm all, I would be all for the 75%. I don't have a problem with that rule necessarily, but I just have, have dogs. So it looks like you can get around this by keeping the fence behind the 40% mark. Well, but then, I guess then, then that rose bush is sort of out, out on its own. The rose bush? Well, I don't know right. if you see that. That's the. Is that where the trellis is going? The right. trellis is an arch trellis, so the, there's a gate. You would walk uh, under the trellis, and I would train the rose bush over it and around it. So, I mean, I know that the guidelines don't consider like vegetation to be historic, but um, you know that rose bush has been there for a long time. That trellis is going to be a pretty prominent architectural feature yes. added to the front of the house. So. That's the trouble I have with it as well. If that it's going like to be really prominent. Huh? If I just put like a gate there and scratch, I scratch the trellis, would you be okay with the well, you still have the 40% issue and the 75% transparency, and I don't know that there's a special circumstance to allow for that. I mean, I know you have dogs. Um, would it be possible to really construct the fence at 40% and put some sort of a trellis, more freestanding, that's not yeah, no, I mean, I'm not fine. A I mean, you know, I understand. I'm, I'm here to make my case, but ultimately, you guys make the decision. Um, the trellis, freestanding, might be a landscape element. You know, I think it says, like, feet. yeah, um, um, it'd be over 24 inches, though, right? Isn't that the rule? You can do what you want as long as it's not taller than 24 inches off the ground. Well, but well, we have a lot of flexibility for landscape elements that are less than six feet in height that are in the backyard. Backyard, um, but if if he's moving the fence back and the trellis is still sitting forward of the fence right at the front corner of the house, then that's something that we would still review as a landscape feature. Um, but then that's really a fence, but still have to be. I should also say there's like um, like a duplex. The house, so the house to the east, which would face that at some point in the past was divided into like a duplex and there are people coming and going all the time and the door is at the side so that for the, for the fence. I know it's not in the image. But they, they converted the old bay window so it's, the, it's, yeah, it's the, the old bay window is now the entrance to the home. Yeah, in that image you can see it. So anyway. I'm, I'm all for saving the rose bush and think the plants are important, um, but I still, I just don't see a unique circumstance or a special circumstance that would allow me to vote to approve the fence in the location it is, um, as well as the trellis. Any more comments? So. Um, I would ask staff on, uh, it says a trellis is often temporary, but incorporation into the fence provides the trellis is likely more permanent. Is that saying that if there's not a fence, there can be a trellis? That's what um, I was getting at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we'd have to look back at exactly what the guidelines say about that kind of structure. Um, you know, we certainly, we have people who put all sorts of things front of their houses that you just stick right. it in the ground and you can pick it up and move it right. the very next day. Um, when you've got a six foot high, two foot deep trellis, that's probably getting beyond that threshold of, of I don't know, 
truly. Remarkable. I mean, I, I guess I would disagree with that because you can buy them and put them in your yard and take them out. I mean, you can purchase them at the store and come home with them and set them in the backyard. It could, it could be. It doesn't a, seem like a permanent right. uh, structure. It's something that holds the plant up, right. basically. What if it wasn't a arched architectural structure? What if it was more of a, just a trellis? I mean, that, I mean, you know, something simple, just a vertical. You know, there's all sorts of designs. Well, I'm just trying to get it into I mean, what non permanent. About, what, could you keep the, on that side, could you keep the chain link fence and just put a trellis on the inside of the fence for the bush? Yeah, I, you know, uh, you know, honestly, I mean, if, if just, this is denied, I'm, I'm probably going to pull it back to the 40% and just put like a six foot, like cedar, cedar stockade fence there. And that's probably ultimately what I would do. So, and yeah, don't worry it, about the rose bushes. Yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, I bet you'll be a trailer. Uh, this is kind of tough because, you know, I think we're inclined to go, hey, that looks really good. <laughs> and we're struggling against the I mean, you know, guidelines. Like, I'm an historian. I, I have a PhD in history, and sometimes I read these guidelines, and it seems fairly arbitrary what it's considered to be historic. Um, so, but it, anyway, I don't need to get on a soapbox. <laughs> um, I mean, I think one option would be to continue it to the July 6th meeting, and between now and then, we could potentially come up with an administratively approvable solution for the fencing and figure out what, if anything, you could do that's not incorporated into the fence to support the rose bushes. Sure. Are you amenable to that? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm you know, I'm amenable. I, re I respect this, uh, this process. So we continue. Yeah, I would make a motion to continue HPCA 16-00055 to the July 16th meeting. Do you want, do you want to, sorry. there's a separate item for the deck that was recommended for. Oh, for, okay, I'm sorry. But that would be for items one and two. For one and three. Or, or one and three. The continuance is for one. Sorry, well. Oh, I, okay. No two. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All right. I think so she said Jill. July 16th. July 6th. Should be July oh, sorry, 6th. 6th. Yeah, okay. So make sure we caught that. Okay. So it's moved by Joe Meacham. It's second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We continued. We still have one more. We have item. one more. I would make a motion to approve HBCA 16 item four to construct the deck. Um, Let's see, did you have any, with the specific findings noted by staff in the staff report? Second. Okay, it's been moved by Joe Meacham and second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, item four is approved. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next. HPCA 16-00063 at 828 Northwest 38th Street. Crown Heights, Ward 2, consideration and possible action on application of Amy and Alex Skinner by Bruce Bacchus of Bacchus Paint Architects for certificate of appropriateness to one, screen side porch, elective, two, replace five aluminum windows, elective, three, construct second story addition, elective, and four, refurbish portico, elective. Yes, I'm Bruce Bacchus, and first of all, I want to thank um, Angela, Katie, and Eric for getting us to this point. They've been incredibly responsive um, and helpful through the process, so well well done. Heck, I'd, I'd go to Africa and back with Eric. Um, oh, I guess I did go to Africa and back with Eric. Oh, well. Um, so we have we'll four items. We'll explain that later. <laughs> More of that. Okay, any questions? Do you have any questions? For the applicant. Mr. Bacchus, staff has recommended continuing item two, um, which is replacing the five aluminum windows because they need more information. Did you read the staff report? Yes, I did. Okay. Do you 
have any more information? We, we have had uh, several conversations since the staff report came out. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, say that what we have recommended is the Pella Architectural Series. It's a stimulated light, divided light window, not a true divided light window. Um, this house is for my daughter and her husband and my one and only granddaughter um, to comply strictly with the, with the guidelines and standards. And there are standards and guidelines, and that kind of confuses things sometimes when it shall or it may. But this is a, a, a standard. Um, we are looking for a divided light window that will not have a, uh, a, a big requirement for maintenance. Um, I've looked far and wide for a true divided light window that is clad, which is allowed, uh, but I cannot find a true divided light window that is clad and thermal paned. So for energy reasons, we'd like to do thermal paint. Um, I've got five compelling reasons, and you all will decide. Um, the, historic, the historic windows are long gone, the aluminum mill finished. Uh, 50s, 60s, single pane windows um, are nasty. Uh, they are terribly inefficient from an energy perspective. Um, secondly, we have a second floor location, so wherever we're suggesting that we allow a window to be a simulated divided light that is clad is so far away from where you could view it, there would be no way of telling whether it was true divided light or not. Um, Three, the guidelines and standards allow thermal pane windows, and the standards allow clad windows. Uh, but again, I can't find a clad, true divided light window. I don't know that it exists. Um, when you go to a um, thermal pane window, I can't find a window that has a 7 8 inch mutton. They jump up to an inch and an eighth mutton due to the heavier weight of the window unit and that wouldn't be appropriate. So we've got a conundrum here, uh, some things that are odd. Um, but I'm open to learning from you all if I'm wrong about that. Um, the fourth reason is that if, if allowed to put these windows on the front, they will match the windows that we are planning on putting on the back, which are allowed. They meet all the guidelines um, and standards. So. It's interesting because the location, we can't do that because of visibility. It's on the front, and it, there's a different set of rules. Um, fifth, uh, there's no perceptible difference between a true divided light window and the simulated divided light window that we're recommending. Um, when you introduce thermal pane windows, you introduce a spacer bar between the front and the back piece of glass. And I've got pictures of this that I could pass around if you all would be interested in seeing them. But once you go with that spacer bar, there's no way to tell whether it's true divided light or not true divided light because you can't see the mutton being continuous. And that's what we're talking about is a, a, a continuous mutton from front to back. Uh, the spacer bar obscures any view of the mutton. Um, we are so. So the mutton is between the pieces of glass? No, on the architectural series by Pella, they have a fixed exterior mutton, a fixed interior mutton, and a spacer between the panes of glass. So it has a, a continuous view from front to back. Okay, and so guideline 4.6.16 says that um, simulated muttons may not be used except when internal muttons are used in conjunction with permanently fixed surface applied muttons on the interior and the exterior of the glass. That is what is on this proposed window? Yes. Ex exactly that? With, yeah, with the spacer in between. Okay. Yes, exactly that. OK. Um, I've got pictures of the simulated holding it up next to the existing windows and the 7 8 inch muttons that align. And we think that's helpful. Angela, thank you. If they can share, there's five copies there. The top picture is showing a true divided light window that has the spacer bar between the panes of glass. So when you look at that, you don't know whether that is a true divided light window or a simulated divided light window because you can't see from 
inside to outside, you're seeing a spacer bar between the panes of glass. The second and third pictures are a picture of the existing house with the seven eighth inch muttons um, uh, held up in front of the seven eighth inch muttons of the original windows. Those windows that I'm holding that in front of are the downstairs windows which we're keeping um, and so the windows we're talking about are all on the second floor that currently have the aluminum non-historical windows. Katie, windows are very complicated and I have a feeling that I would like to hear what you have to say about this because it seems like that we have not in the past uh, approved aluminum clad windows on the front of a house. Right or wrong? We've approved aluminum clad one over one windows on the front of, we think, maybe one house where the historic windows were gone. Um, Which the guidelines and standards allow, may be used as how. Yeah, the, the catch is we allow aluminum clad windows, but there is not an aluminum clad true divided light product. You can't make it, it doesn't work um, because of so, the way they're constructed. So if we allowed. Um, something other than, but I, I know what it is, it's the single pane, so what, have we allowed that in the past on windows on the front with uh, a, like a vinyl clad? Is that what we no, what we've, what we've approved on the front for replacement windows has been a true divided light thermal pane wood window with no cladding. With no cladding. Um, there's a couple of manufacturers that make that product. When you go to the thermal pane true divided light window, as the applicant stated, the muntin gets thicker because it's supporting right. double the glass. So. so I just, windows are very confusing. Sure. I, I uh, had to read it. It sounds like, like that you Ten you've, times you've, and then Katie had to tell me what it meant. Right. So I'm just trying to figure out what we generally will consistently have approved in the past for windows on the front. And that is wood windows, single pane. True divided light or one over one thermo, I mean, double pane. Is that correct? Is that kind of where we are? Okay. If you have, if you have one over one, then you can get a thermal, then you can get the double thermal pane. No problem because we don't have the money. If you have those, then you have to, then that's where I'm a little lost. So what, what the commission for the most part has done with when, with replacement windows that have um, divided light is we have approved thermal pane divided light windows with the somewhat thicker muntin. Um, I would say typically that's been on structures where all the historic windows were gone already um, and you're going back with the new and it's gonna be a little bit thicker and I think the commission has fallen on the side that that change right. in the mutton profile was preferable to a simulated divided light window. So that's how, how we've, um, for the most part, voted in the past. Several people were asking about, we had one case where we approved all over the historic house, we approved a simulated divided light window, um, like what's been proposed here. Those were very tall, narrow um, casement windows where you know, storm window wasn't an option because of the way that they function um, and because of the proportions of the window, I think the argument was made that the mutton getting that much thicker was going to really dramatically affect the appearance of the windows. It doesn't sound like what you're requesting is consistent with what we generally approve on the front of the house. And I'd say maybe our case is a little bit different because we've got all the first floor windows are in place with the 7 8 inch mutton. And if you say, yeah, it's okay to do that, but it goes to an inch and an eight, in my perspective, that's a much worse egregious error design-wise, thicker mutton, thinner mutton, than the TDL versus the simulated, which on a second floor condition, you, there's no way anybody could ever tell. And, and with, with the um, thermal pane windows, there's no way you can tell really between a true divided light and a simulated divided light anyway. So I would, I would maybe think that in this case, um, and we, we don't have historic pictures of the original home, the, the nasty aluminum windows that you can see are one over one. We even consider, would you all be open to a one over one 
rather than the divided light. And I go, well, that's design-wise, that's kind of inconsistent with the rest of the house, too. I'm, I'm so not opposed we're kind to of been painted in a right. corner. We've considered that in the past, and I that I would not be opposed to that. What? One over one on the second floor. Kind of what's there now. I mean, Katie, I, I guess what would be the if we did approve this, would it be a special condition that we would have to, or unique circumstance? So I I do think the situation with building an addition with a certain type of windows that meets the guideline, remaining historic windows on the front of the house, but replacing other windows adjacent to the remaining historic windows creates some, I don't know if it's entirely unique, but some unusual circumstances. I, I, like I said, I feel like a lot of times when we've approved um, replacement windows with the wider muntins, that's all that's there. Everything right. else right. is gone, so you don't have the historic window next to it where the thicker muntin stands out. Um, so I think that's a good, unique circumstance. Describe it, Alan. I'm, I'm still windows. <laughs> well, you know, you, unique circumstance would be. I'm not saying I'm for it. I'm just saying what would be the unique circumstance? Well, to, to introduce a uh, uh, just to be consistent with the with the guidelines on the front of the house, a, a window that doesn't exist. What, what are the rest of the windows going to be, Bruce, in addition? What kind? Uh, the same thing, the Pella simulated we, divided light. Simulated. To, then you'll have a third window that that will look out of place. So to me, the consistency in a minority of the windows. I know, but we, we usually do it the other way around. We allow for something, something somewhat different on an addition, but we're more insistent on it being original the the differences typically are encouraged or allowed on the on the back of the house but on the front not right. so much right. yeah, so I, I think as far as a difference it's kind of six of one half dozen of the other that unless we say okay if you can't find a mountain that's the appropriate width then you just can't have a thermal pane window and you're going to have to go to a single paint product um, which the commission since we've started allowing thermal pane the commission has generally been accommodating the wider muntin to allow the thermal pane um, as as I've observed anyway we haven't done a careful analysis of, of that um, but if we're going to require true divided light and also allow thermal pane then you're going to get a window that looks different from the historic window no matter what you do um, if we allow the integral divided light, it's going to look possibly more similar to the historic window, but the, the method of construction, you know, there are other differences right. that exist. <laughs> so are there historic windows that are going to remain in place? Just to yes, yes. Yeah. All the first floor windows All that the you're first seeing floor there. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the difference is if you do the aluminum clad, then the mutton size is closer in size to the original. Correct. If you had to go with the other, it would be substantially wider. Correct. The true divided line. Right. right. So. It's a conundrum. It is. But I enjoy the conversation. Because <laughs> it's, it's the same thing that's played through my head. Yes. Yeah. We've lived Ready? in the neighborhood, by the way, for 34 years. I'm a fan of it. I know the value of what we're doing here. I mean, I'm. And it's just, you know, I think when we when we step out and then allow something else, then uh -huh. we're always looking back, going, wow. we allowed that, right. and so right. that's what makes it difficult. And there are some really awful um, simulated divided lights out there that you know pop up from time to time. Um, so. But do you consider the Pella Architectural Series one of those, or? Well, that's why that. Well, that's why there's that. Uh, except in the 4.6.16, permanently attached interior exterior, so it's right. not just an applied. You know, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that and it meets the criteria for the addition, right? By being attached right. with the spacer bar and all that. Right. Right. So it force these five windows to be different from any other window. <laughs> Right. Yeah. 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 These five would, if allowed, would match all the rest of the second floor windows. So. 
I just I don't want to I don't want to be in a position where we're matching windows to the additions because we're lenient with the additions and then to say that it's going to look better if they all match because we have an addition. It, it should, to me, we should focus on the other way around. I'm not decided on it, but I'm just saying it just seems backwards in and the I, way. I appreciate that, and I, my professional opinion is that the 7 8 inch button in a stimulated light window matches the original historic window better than right. the inch and an eighth, and one's going to be stacked right over the other. I mean, they're clearly adjacent to one another. I, I think it would change the character. And the lights are pretty small, and so having the big, bigger mutton to me kind of makes it a clunky window rather than a, a delicate window. It's a tough issue. I appreciate it. Could we not say? look at the spacer? Because if I understand this right, we've got muttons on the outside of the windows, mm -hmm. right, both sides. Then there's a spacer on the inside between mm -hmm. the muttons. So there's no real opening right there. Seems like we kind of have true divided light. It's just not wood. It is. I mean, well, we would be taking on. I mean, if we approve that, we would be taking on. To me, looking at the at, at that type of a window in the future. That's because my, to my me, question, what I. I mean, I understand it. I mean, I would like to say yes. I mean, that's where I see the problem is that. Does the color of the. Say yes to an undivided. I mean, to a non-through divided light on the front this time, then where are we next time? Well, That's my but we could set a new standard for what is acceptable. We, well, we, and we would have every to start accepting non-through divided lights. How no, you the, must have a spacer. Well, they all have, I Seems mean, like not all of them have the spacer. Here. Is that right? Am I not right? To make it true divided lights. Well, with no, true divided true. light. Simulates a true divided light. With true divided light divided, right? windows, see if we have a picture. You know. On this historic true divided light window, this is its own piece of glass. Correct. And you pop that gl piece of glass out all by itself. Right. And but you would, would have no big. glass left, right? And there would be, and these would all remain, right. these other panes. Right. On the windows that are proposed, it's one solid piece of glass that fills the entire sash. Um, but there are so spacers but there's between spacers. the glass, the yep. two pieces of big glass. Does I don't it, know. Bruce, does the color of the spacer match the cladding always? Um, no, it's it's a shadowy yeah, color. Yeah, it's kind of a, a gooey dark, charcoal gray. gray. Oh, a charcoal just, gray? It kind of just, it, which I think is better than the bright silver aluminum spacer oh, yeah. on the. But, uh, I mean, some of them are kind of a rubbery look. You look in there and you really, I mean, yeah. it is difficult to tell because, I mean, it's an actual. Yeah. I've got a piece of it here if anybody wants to pass it around. I have seen a home on 16th Street that had all its windows replaced. And I didn't understand the spacer. So I was looking at it very closely. This is true divided light or what? And it was, this is what this was. Do we know which, you know which house that is west of Chartel? It has all new windows. I, I hope they came to see us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look that up. Ah, at look west that of one. Chartel. I don't know. What do Second you think? house. That's exactly what it has, I think. I think because minority of the windows going in, that might be a unique circumstance. Five windows out of 30, 40? Uh, let me do the math. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just right. saying that, you know, uh, we could. 25-ish. Might be a unique circumstance. I will add that, um, not to advocate one way or the other, but we do have, we do make a distinction in the guidelines between replacement of historic windows when we have a documented historic window and replacement of non-historic windows, which is what right. Right. these are, although historic windows remain on the house. Um, so as far as like how wide we're opening the door, that I mean, I just, I feel like we're crossing to the other side, that we have said no, 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 and now we're saying Yes, in unique circumstance, which is really just yes, you know. Well, so then every so. time we have to say, well, we so. do it sometimes, but not for you. If somebody was going to replace all the windows in their house with the um, simulated, I would say, you know, that, no. that is, is not a unique circumstance because they'll, they'll all be consistent if, if they're right. true divide light. But this would be forcing these five windows to be different all the other in appearance, in my opinion. It's an important decision. It is. I appreciate it, too. You don't <laughs> want to open Pandora's box, and I understand.
<laughs> it happens all the time. <laughs> so there is no true divided light double pane window that you have found, correct? Um, that has a mutton. Yeah, that mutton, is yes, smaller. straight through. This the, is the answer to your question here. is yes, there is a true divided light window that exists. Um, but it has the inch and an eighth wide mutton, so it's right. wider than the ones that are on the house. Oh, so are the so, ones. That's and in my opinion, that's a more egregious difference than whether the wood really sneaks through or not. So what about since it's on the second floor? That well, the other. Okay, I'm, I'm looking. I mean, what about um, how many? It's how many over? Is it like the bottom? Is it eight over eight? Yes. And that would be perhaps a unique circumstance because the size of the panes are so small. That's correct. That the the width of the larger muttons would look, would look massive. Would even look worse. Whereas if it was just like I don't know, Ann, what do you? <laughs> She's going. I don't know, Joe. You'll just go every way. I, I it's a difficult one. I don't really. I, I still am kind of not for um, the Open front the as an exception. And I, and I mean, I'm all for energy efficiency, but I, I would just be more inclined to say on the front, just, you know, five windows out of all of them. I mean, make them like the ones on the first floor. Just, it doesn't seem make, right, I guess, in the end. Yeah, just non -thermal. Non -thermal. We can do a single pane, I, two divided that. light, I believe, that may have a clad frame, but not a, no, I don't know that. I don't know. Um, Colby makes one that has a paintable sash with a clad frame, I believe. But it's it would be a single pane at that point. So the other way of looking at it, Bruce, would be to put in a wood window. I mean, I'm just and uncomfortable with the aluminum. I just feel like that the next person that came in, it would be difficult. I mean, unique would you circumstances. That? Would I consider a wood window? Mm -hmm. No. For those five? Or something else. Too hot? For those five, no. You know, I'm not going to do that to my daughter. I mean, there's so much it's, maintenance that goes into a wood window long term we, that it's. I, I just, I, I part of that is not to me. I can't, it's hard for me to accept that because the majority of the houses in the neighborhood still have their original wood windows. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, so I just, I don't think that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the energy thing can just only go so far. We, I think we've incorporated it to try to address that issue. But, I mean, bef it hasn't even been that long ago that we didn't allow any. Right. And we, were, we said no to everybody. Like, nope, single pane, nope, single pane. So I just think we have to be careful. It, we, we are here at your direction. That would have solved the problem, I think. Doing a, a wood window, a little more single pane on the front. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a wood pane, window that's wood. single pane. So, a one over one. The same design, but single pane wood. So a one over one is what we would. No, I think no. he's saying over single eight. instead of thermal. Oh, single. Pane. Yeah. This goes single pane, painted wood, like the lowers. So. But that's more maintenance. I understand. I, and it's less energy efficient. It, it is, but five out of thirty. <laughs> 25. 25. <laughs> Don't want to get so, I, I mean, we can continue. And let's not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's true. We don't have, I mean, depending on what product we're going towards, we don't have documentation of various things. So there'd be something that at least has to come back to document the windows that are going to be. Do you have an alternate idea? Um, I, I can ask my client. Okay. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> um, would you have opposition to doing a wood window painted and then the wood windows on the first floor are wood window painted single pane? So those five windows would the not have any efficiency. In, in my experience, North side um, of home, the paint job lasts better because it doesn't have the UV beating on it. So it would have the opportunity not to have as high maintenance as the south side window, and they could um, that they would clearly be agreeable to that. If 
that's if that's the best you have to offer. The other Bruce will, is Bruce will come over and paint every five years for you. So yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, if my if my granddaughter's involved, I'll do it. <laughs> That's right. Hold yeah, the look at it that way. Um, I suggest an alternate so that I can. Okay. I'll write it down. What are you w saying? Would you rather have a clad one over one that wouldn't match what's below? You probably the architect. I would say I would rather go the eight over eight and match what's below. Bruce, your daughter probably needs to come to the podium. So to, yeah, and be recorded. So while she's walking up, I'm going to just note that on an application we heard earlier this afternoon, we made them continue and come back with changes to window documentation. So to go through this much revision on the materials and possibly the pane configuration, we should probably continue the windows as well. I know you all really didn't want to continue. Well, and I think every, mine would, if I made a motion, it would just, they could go ahead with all the other windows. Then they could just come back to the ones on the front. Hmm. Could you yeah, we need there, to do that. But we need to do that if we need to. I mean, continue. that's what I was thinking. Approve what he's suggested for the rest of the house, but for the front-facing windows okay. to be wood to match the first floor. That's my well, it's, it's possible motion. So that's they're called a separate, called, item. A separate item. item. Yeah. Yeah. There, we've. At least this is its own separate line item. We could approve um, items one, three, and four, and that would allow us to get started in 10 days. Right. No, and then that's continue there any? item two. Yes. Since you came out, would you like to say something? No, I thought someone told me to come up. So. <laughs> we asked her to come up. We were, yeah, debating in-house what would her preference be, and I right. think both of our preference would be a wood window that we're committing to paint and maintain on the front of the house that would match um, and not do thermal pain. But they would need to come back with a, more information. Yeah. Okay. But that wouldn't stop your progress. No, but it would just break my heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I understand your conundrum and I appreciate you wanting to protect things, so. Okay, are there any comments on one, three, and four? <laughs> not one. Thank you for coming up. We, <laughs> we, we continue. We're going to continue that part. So. Staff, did you have any other comments you had uh, to you recommended approval of the other items? No, nothing else. Okay, any motions? I would predict, predict, pre yeah, predict that one day there'll be a committee that won't have the resolve of yours, but for today you've protected integrity of the process. So could, could be worse. Well done. Well, it, has it, has it has been. been. It has been. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we're so well liked, Bruce. Um, that's good. I would like to make a motion uh, uh, for HPCA 16-00063 to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, separate it, uh, uh, approve items one, three, and four with the uh, findings noted by staff in the staff report. Second. Second. Moved by Joe Meach and second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, one, three, and four is approved. Uh, I would like to make a motion to continue. What are we going to do? Uh, can we continue. approve and continue part of it or, or just do I, it? are we going to have to? I think to two just, is just continue item two. We can't really split it out. So approve. Or can, yeah. Did I say that? Continue item two, replace five windows. Because two is just the five windows. Okay, so all the other ones are in yeah. the addition. Right. right. Okay. Um, so I make a motion to continue HPCA 16-00063 item two to the July 6th meeting. Okay. Second. So moved by Joe Meacham, second by Neil Crank Clements. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Continue. Thank you, citizens. Thank you. You're good volunteers. Thank you. I like a little respect. HPCA 16 0064 at 614 Northwest 25th Street, Paseo, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of David W. Remy for certificate of appropriateness to one, construct dwelling elective, two, construct accessory building elective, three, remove existing curb cuts elective. 
Four, install new curb and driveway elective. Five, construct fence and gate elective. Six, install mechanical equipment elective. Seven, install sidewalks elective. And eight, install retaining walls and paving and backyard elective. David, thank you for investing in this neighborhood. For what? For buying a slot. <laughs> uh, you know, since 2005, my wife and I have always lived in urban neighborhoods. We've um, been involved in the progress, I've served on committees, and um, worked for developers that have promoted downtown Oklahoma City and its growth. Uh, we took a four year hiatus, moved to Denver. Um, and enjoyed living in some of their uh, inner city neighborhoods as well. And when we decided to move back, we had a little girl and um, wanted to be close to family. So when we moved back, we looked for some of those um, same elements. Uh, and we see that uh, very similar to the neighborhood we lived in Denver uh, in uptown Paseo. And so we are uh, just ecstatic, ecstatic and thrilled to uh, potentially be a, be a part of this growth uh, of this community. I know this neighborhood well, have built many, many houses in this neighborhood. Um, and there are a couple of things I noticed that kind of struck me and, and made the house, the design stand out from everything else around it, meaning blocks around it. Um, the large expansive roof, um, the fact that there is no front porch, there's a stoop, but there's no porch. Um, other, house, other single family houses on that block all have front porches. Um, there is one across the street to the similar style home, yours is more modern, um, across and to the east, that also has a stoop that's a single family, but they also have a side porch. So there's more eyes on the street. Um, I don't see that there's an option to have eyes on the street with the design of your stoop here. So I would like to see more of a porch incorporated. Um, and I'm not too sure about the modern windows. Um, I'm seeing them, page three of 48 in the staff report, they're kind of tall, tall windows on the side. Um, those are quite different from anything found in the neighborhood. So those are the three things that stuck out to me. And I open it up for discussion. I would like to speak on the other side. That. <laughs> I like the design. I think that, I, I sometimes think that we have designs that look too, and I've said this before, that look too much like the other houses in the neighborhood so that they, when you see a house, then you don't know when it was built. And I don't think that that is, I think that I'm, I'm opposed to that type, although we seem to lean that way, which is, I mean, sometimes it's, I'm not totally opposed, but I, I like people of this era to have their own opportunity to express themselves as an architect or designer, even in a historic district, if it follows the guidelines, and I think staff probably spent a lot of time looking at this because I think it is different, and they did recommend approval. Um, I'm on their side on this one because I think that um, being distinctive and not confusing people that this was built 50, 60, 80 years ago is a good thing in a historic district. Does this uh, block have the porches on all the houses? I mean. Yes. Pretty consistent. There are porches on every house. There are also every single family house. Um, there are three or four sets of brick duplexes that have more stoops, but that's a duplex and it's a different, completely different style. That's um, something that I've, it, it I It reminds think, me, uh, though, of the one in Mesta Park that was one of our, I think, yep. the very first just, um, yep. contemporary house that was built in the neighborhood. And I know that one pretty well. And but, it does uh, not have a porch. But, and it is I think that's how it's, well. di it's disconnected from the neighborhood. It depends no on where porch. it is, but if it's in a block where it has porches, yeah. you know, that's, that's an important element, the porches. People live on the front of their house part, you know, they, it's part of the I mean, the I think it's a cool design. Line. I'm not saying it's not. I think it's Thank really you. cool, but I think that is an element that is very specific to our historic neighborhoods, um, especially Paseo. So I just, it, it just seems like it's, it's not connected to the street. Um, and that roof is, there's a lot of roof there. <laughs> if I may, um, the application that my portion of the submittal, um, uh, Mr.
Mr. Brown has every house on that street pictured. Yeah. Um, and I would say that um, the if you're going to call every house to have a front porch, I think that's a pretty wide, um, wide, wide brush that you're painting with. Um, additionally, the purpose of not having a front porch is uh, I really designed this house not because um, I saw something and wanted to duplicate it. Um, I really took the specific site into consideration. Uh, this porch, these porches that you see on a lot of these streets are on the north side of the house, um, which serve no solar energy efficient site specific design purpose. Um, and so I elected to put that overhang and that porch element on the southern side of the house for that reason. Um, and I agree with the solar aspect, but I'm just talking about street activity, and, you know, for the old, older neighborhoods, people would sit in the front porch and they, you know, they'd visit, you know. Uh, a, lot of these, a lot of neighborhoods have that, some don't, because I could see this appropriate. It's kind of a federal style, you know, where there is the stoop, you know. It's a style. I mean, it's a it's a uh, type with no front porch, but I didn't know, didn't know if it fit into this area or not, this block. I think it's probably most similar to this house across the street, which has a similar across stoop. Across the street? Um, 615 Northwest 25th. If, if it were to be put yeah. into a... Uh, which one? Stylus block. Oh, 615. Uh, the one on screen. Great. I mean, it's similar-ish. But it doesn't say, um, I don't think the guidelines say that we have to make them look like and have the same things. It says right. the same rhythm, the same height, similar heights. The porches I mean, are part of the rhythm and the character. The administration, not, I mean, there's still houses that just have a, a little yeah, I mean, that's just my thought on it. And, it's, and there's a mixture. It's not always consistent. I agree with you, Joe. I like it a lot. I think it's, I think it's it, it still maintains a... Uh, rhythm, proportion, form, character of an historic neighborhood without trying to copy exactly. I, mean, I, I just really believe nice designers detail. and architects of this era should be able to express themselves if it, if it fits into the context of the surrounding homes. I'm not objecting to the to style. Me, that's I'm not objecting to the style. It's more that just the activity. And, but on this house, there is no activity in the front. I agree with Alan. I'm not objecting to the style. The fact that there's no connection to the street Please. and that large expanse of roof, I do not think is an appropriate design for this block. May, Where is the may I ask what the Lexus is between quantifiable size of front porch to pedestrian street activity? It's hard to say. <laughs> I mean, there's More a two. I mean, how, do you have to have Doesn't enough be, porch to seat? 20 people, or is four people enough? Is the, what is the purpose of the picture on, who provided this on 44 and 48? We're looking at a traditional style, you know, World War II after whatever. I mean. 44. Is that, was that from you, Katie? No, this, that's part of the applicant's yeah, deal, and it was, house, who, it was this and the next page after that were photos that the applicant submitted to sort of um, right. provide more documentation of the architectural diversity in the neighborhood. To me, I mean, that's two blocks over and also, but I think this, right. the, the, it's different. That's a very, very small house. I mean, those Modest. are eight, 900 square feet. Eight, it's they a are, tiny house. It tells us, to me, it tells the story of the neighborhood. It says, during the 40s and 50s, there were still open lots and therefore people Build those in. Maybe the guy next door, he owned the lot, he finally sold it. And in that period, that house was built. It distinctly tells the story that there were empty lots as time went on and they were filled. To me, today, we have an empty lot and as time goes on, it was filled. And it tells the story of the continuation of the neighborhood. I just, that that's my philosophy on it. I just, I, I don't like, I mean, I think the, the the more it fits in, as far as size and, and, and fenestration patterns and so forth, the better, but the more distinctive it is of our time at the same time, which is a very difficult uh, design to come to. 
is the very best type of design. Instead of trying to take uh, existing features off of 1928 houses and paste them onto houses. I don't think today. anybody's arguing for that at all, Joe. We're just talking well, about. Well, you're saying that it needs a porch. That's just, just that's just a function, something to continue the street life of the block. If that's what there is, if you have people using porches and there's suddenly one with a blank front, that's to me is is impersonal and it didn't fit I, in with the character potentially the block. I didn't go look at it, the block, so I don't know for sure. It, and it and on the roof pitch, I kind of agree with Neela. It seems a little bit imposing. It doesn't uh, say me. function. It um, says so. I would look at that. some of the other some of the other adjacent houses. I think the form could respond to the roof pitch of adjacent houses. It doesn't mean right. that you're copying Joe or stealing a detail and, and sticking it on the house, but it needs to fit in form. Well, I think he needs to be able to follow the guidelines, and I think he has. That that's my point. It doesn't. The consistency, the spacing, the plate, I mean, that, that's what I, th I think that, I, I see your point, but I think that he has followed the guidelines. That, that's well, what. there's following the guidelines and then there's, <laughs> you know, there's nuances that yes. we we'll always talk I about. I agree. So, um, Could I ask an architect I think we're, I think we're question split here on, this. on a setback for any house? <clears throat> and if, if all the houses with front porches, there's a select feet of setback. It goes to the occupied space. The occupied space, right. not, not the front porch. Right. Just, I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. I knew, I knew you were going on that. Thank you. <laughs> Save me some. You know, some houses, you look, you're on the front porch, it's you look down, and there's, and there's porch after porch, and people, it's a, it's a neighborly thing. Yeah. That, that goes beyond just architecture. <laughs> That's why I feel about it. You know, it seems, <clears throat> seems impersonal to me, kind of street, imposing on the street. Is that a, um, well, there's, there's a few things here, but. Um, this is the best discussion we've had in a long time. I, I, I would say at least, you know, I've put um, a lot of thought, a lot of time, a lot of effort into uh, trying to come up with some, something that solves the dilemma that is written within your very own guideline, which is on the one hand it says be compatible. On the other hand it says new should be differentiated. So that's very easy to write in a narrative. It's incredibly difficult to solve that problem in a design. Um, this house I feel like is of the time, and I, and I know that everyone seems to be in agreement on that. Um, Everything that's done from the roof pitch to the to the front porch is very intentional and specific. Um, I've made every effort, uh, for instance, choosing to um, exceed the setback to meet the um, the street wall of the houses, not the front porches. Um, to me, is being respectful to the context to not say to push towards the street to be louder. I'm trying to be subtle and soft, contextual. Um, but differentiated and new. And so the, the difficulty of hearing um, the conversation today is um, that the suggestions that you're talking about significantly alter kind of the intent and specifics of hmm. the design, and that concerns me. What are the non architects think? I agree with Joe. I like porches. <laughs> I agree with Alan. We are all over the place. So if the applicant had brought forth a design that had an eight foot deep front porch on this house, whatever that would look like, does that, does that it might. function right? Yeah, does it that might. do what it needs to do? Or, I mean, I don't know what, that, the, what, what, the, that what the measurement would be, but you'd make it a it would go from a space that's not usable now that would be a usable space. So if that's six feet wide by six feet deep, I don't know what that is. I mean, we'd have to see. Look at, can you be more specific on usable, please? Um, yes, I can. Uh, what I mean by that is the stoop is just you go in and out of the house. It's not a place where you pause, where you're part of the neighborhood. And we could, it's kind of going back to what Alan and I have been saying, where it's not connected to 
the neighborhood because there is no usable space. So the, the width is appropriate to where in, in the seat wall is such that it's 18 inches off the stoop so that um, four to six people could comfortably sit on the wall. Something tells me that you're not going to be doing <laughs> Something tells me and really, that this a, is a not porch will not change my behavior. It will be a right. aesthetic nod It'll be different. that doesn't support the intended use and behavior. It would be different, that's for sure. Yeah. So we just spoke about if if this had a front porch on it. Say if we, it does not have a front porch, but it has less uh, height to the roof and two dormers. How would that look? I don't know. I haven't seen the plan. I well, mean, I, I, haven't seen one I don't know. I know that we've had some issues with a few very unfortunate steep roofs right. on garages and houses in the past year or two. And, um, you know, again, it's a really cool design, but I just, it, it, that, that pitch seems out of scale with any of the surrounding. There are several tutors in the neighborhood that have pitches that are steep. But they're tutors. I mean, it's a totally different design. And the, the roof is going to be, um, this is just one big slab, right? Where the tutors, usually it's cut, I don't know, the, the I you know, architectural I like it term. I redesign it into some kind of colonial revival type house. I don't think and anybody's talking about that, colonial revival, no. but I don't like the design by committee, that's for sure. So right, right, right. We're right, just right. talking about some right. function. Sure. The neighborhood issues are important, at least to us. Right, <laughs> right. right. And, it's and suburban. When you go to a house and you pull in the garage and you never see your neighbors, that's what we're trying to avoid. We want people outside visiting, you know, or at least I don't, having I don't a think, street light. I don't think that's part of our um, uh, mission. Well, okay. Well, and, and I don't talk it, to any of my neighbors. But that's what the point right. <laughs> I live there clearly. Yeah, I don't talk to my neighbors either. Uh, I, I just don't, I don't think that's part of our mission. Well, that's part of the, the architecture reinforces some of those. And that's why I mean, we're not happen. talking about design when we're saying we're forcing somebody to get a porch because we think that they should be able to sit there. But that's I, the that's, reason why I, they have. I mean, that's kind of devolved into that. I mean, that's these houses guess. have porches. I mean, uh, that's that's my opinion. That's what I've seen in this neighborhood. Um, maybe at this point, it's up to someone making a motion, and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> I make a motion to approve <laughs> PCA <laughs> 16. <laughs> Zero 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 sixty four. Not, not to like okay. totally shut everything down, but there are several other items. I don't know if anyone has concerns about anything else other no. than the, the house. Suzanne, just um, jump in just there. I've read. I mean, okay. I studied the. You know, I mean, I'm, we can still make Suzanne comments. Suzanne wants to make a motion. Comment. Well, I just have an observation. Um, in our neighborhood, we have at least one house that is really, really different from all the other houses. It was built in the 70s. And it um, does not retain its property value partially because it just sticks out and it seems so odd. And it's jarring when we're walking the neighborhood that it doesn't flow. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not that it doesn't match. It doesn't match, but that's not the issue. It doesn't flow. And this one to me does not flow in the neighborhood. Um, if this were in my neighborhood, I would be here screaming, you know, make them go back to the drawing board. And in fact, we just did that on a house in Putnam Heights. A design was uh, submitted that was um, not appropriate. And they totally had to go back to the drawing board. And we were watching very closely on those issues because it, 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 do, it affects the character of the neighborhood when there's a house that that just doesn't fit. doesn't fit. I, I agree, but we can't, my, I, I think that when you are preserving a neighborhood, you still, some things have to be slightly different when they're built in a different time period or we're creating a Disneyland effect. It's like Santa Fe, you go to Santa Fe, you don't know what's old and what's not. Well, so nobody's what's Nobody's proposing that though. You know, when you keep matching things. We're not trying to match. But we do most of the time when we look at new construction. Okay, but we're not doing that here. We all like no, that. No, you're trying to get it to go back to that direction. No, that, that's just architecture. Architecture doesn't have to be a style, a certain style or anything. Just more function to me. But, but going back to the drawing board says that 
at least some commissioners, don't feel like it does fit and flow, but I think it actually does without copying it. So. We'll do it. I mean, a motion. I just need to make a motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then. Do you want to talk about any of these other things? What? I guess they all, they're all related I mean, to I, the project. Was there, they were all part of the. Design. Design. So you can't prove any of it without <laughs> overall design. Well, yeah, I don't think the applicant would really want you to approve his accessory structure and fence and gate and not approve the house. So <laughs> just, I just wanted to, before right. we made a motion, Would you prefer ahead, that we made sure. a motion for just item if, one? Nope, I have no preference. If everyone's comfortable with all items, I'm fine with a motion for all items. Some of them had conditions though, right? I think only one or two, five and six. Yeah, five and six. Items five and six, staff recommended conditions. David, do you agree to those conditions? <laughs> it was the garage door on the back of the accessory building. It shouldn't have said yes, garage. Yes, to submit a uh -huh. overhead door or whatever. Pedestrian and garage door, yeah. Right. Yes. And the fence not exceed six feet in height at the sides in front and not exceed eight feet in height at the rear. It's, uh, there's no rear fence proposed. Um, there's okay. an existing fence. The side and front fences are drawn and proposed at six feet. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to approve HPCA 16-00064 items one through eight with the conditions noted in the staff report. Second. Moved by Joe Meacham and seconded by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. 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 <laughs> Hands? Yes. Four. For, for nay or yay? Four. 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 Aye. Four. Three. Nay. Against? Okay. So, okay, so approval failed. Now, continuous? To look at some. I'm not sure what my options are. Look at some uh, Put a porch on it. options. Spend or? another 80 hours redesigning this. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What so, is that? Is is it? What what happens in continuance? What are the what are the things you want to see? I, I like what I've been saying. I think there is such a, too much room for the street, and I feel like. looking at all the porches surrounding this lot and trying to incorporate maybe does a porch does a porch have to be does a porch have to be covered or is it just a place to be in the front of your house uh, there's another porch on that street that's not covered okay um, that's a that's, that's a that's thought historic i do not mm -hmm. believe a fence and enclosed is what is in the description anyway um i don't have an answer i can't design a porch no 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 no, no, no. But i just right. feel like something is missing from the front uh, I think for me the part of 4.2 that I keep coming back to on the standalone new construction, this is on staff report page 7 of 17, is the concept of the continuity of the character of the historic property and district. So for me, I don't know that it's even necessarily that I have to see one thing or another thing, but I'm still not convinced with the materials that you provided that there's continuity of character in the neighborhood. Which You've the, explained that there are several different characters in this neighborhood. This is a this is a neighborhood of multi characteristics. So how does this fit into that into those characteristics? I think Context. in talking about a porch or talking about a roof line, because we don't have a very explicit definition of what continuity looks like, when you impose the drawings that we have, when you impose your building in the midst of those that are surrounding it, I still feel like I'm, I'm not seeing the continuity of character. Probably because there isn't one. Have you driven the street and looked at the street? Um, there are two tutors, a, the one across the street, if you call it a colonial revival, 
there's a ranch, there's the majority is probably different versions of bungalows. Um, there's different roof pitches, there's different stoop porch conditions. Um, so, so frankly, um, I'm not really sure where, <laughs> where I go from here. I have, a, I have a question about, are we asking him to do a different material because it states in um, that um, the way I read it is uh, rep actual replication of these materials is not encouraged, so they're asking for a different material. Are you saying that? No, it says continuity. It doesn't say exact. Which which one so, are you talking about? Which so I've met well, oh, just the just the four. Where was I at? I thought I was hearing that. We, you wanted that we you were asking for same materials. No, it just says that the, that the stand for this reason, new standalone buildings should maintain the continuity of the character of a historic property in district. Right. We don't have. I mean, that's that, that is what we are called to do is to see that this is a part of the neighborhood. Are you objecting to the exterior material? That's my question. not necessarily no, and I'm not even necessarily. Going as far as my as fellow commissioners who are saying it needs to have a porch or it needs to have this, I'm saying that there's something out that is so out of place to me that it doesn't feel like there's continuity. Not that it has to be exact or that it has to be mimicking, as you were saying, it shouldn't mimic something that's a hundred years old if it's not a hundred years old, but it doesn't quite fit with the continuity of the neighborhood, which is a very diverse neighborhood. And that's why I think this has potential because this is a very I mean, it's mixed so, neighborhood. Right. I mean, it's so simple. Are, are you, I mean, is there encouragement just to start over? Because I don't think there's a lot of changes that could be made to this particular design. Well, I think there could be, but it depends on the architect if they think it's compatible or not or makes sense. I mean, we're not I, trying to redesign it. We just think there's those things that we don't particularly care about it. So we can't redesign it for him. No. But I think that we have to be fair and ask, and, and if he's going to spend time to redesign, that we give him some kind of direction. Well, that's what we're doing. That's what I, I, trying that's to do. That's why I'm questioning it. I, don't, I, I would be lost. I mean, I, I don't think it's, do you feel like that you've had direction? No. My personal feeling about it is that I don't, that the materials, the overall form, there's some things that we feel a little imposing, the roof's a little imposing, the front is austere, something, a porch, or maybe it could be something else, I don't know. Maybe it's something else to make it more compatible with the context. Heather, I, I mean, what, what I heard says. was you need a porch. None of that other, none well, of those other items take, You keep were, on taking these things out of context and saying, you know, No, a I'm just, I'm trying to assist That's what the, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to put myself in his place. If we're wanting a major change, then I think that needs a little more direction. I think going back to what Heather said, there's a lot of characteristics in this neighborhood. Um, and I feel like this brings yet another one. And, and, and for that reason, it does not continue the character. Now, I know that's really whatever. That doesn't tell you anything. Maybe it's not a porch. Something, I just, Something's off on the front. Oops. I feel like it's missing something. And I don't know if any of the other people that voted nay could get, provide an idea. <laughs> and I, and I respect for. the process. And, and, and it is upsetting um, to put this much time and effort and investment into an area that is um, transitional at best. Um, and, uh, you know, houses are selling for $40,000 next door, and this is brand new, pretty, pretty risky investment um, for my wife and I. So um, the question that I would have for the committee is to help me better understand the sentiment to differentiate and to, to be of the time and be relevant. Um, and if that's not appropriate here in the Paseo district, it's an arts district that has a wide variety of architectural styles. Um, including one that I've never seen ever anywhere that's on 26th uh, between Walker and Dewey um, that has a really beautiful, uh, whether you like it or not, sculptural piece of yard art. So 
if, if this isn't appropriate here, um, my concern is that what the committee really wants is replica houses. For what? For replica houses. That's you said how I interpret that. Replica? Yes. There's a difference between that and something that fits in the context. You don't have to replicate to, to be contextual, and you should you know that. So that's what we're arguing with, more, be more contextual, and but for I've us it doesn't appear to be. So. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, um, for us it doesn't appear to be, but we're not arguing to replicate. Right, but I, so if I've been sensitive to materials, um, height, bulk, mass, setback, um, where else do you go to be contextual that isn't replicating architectural artifacts? Form, roof pitch, architectural elements like a porch. I'm just an example. It doesn't so is a, is a flat roof? No. A flat roof is not. We, I can't imagine we would allow a flat roof in, on this property. I know that I you're think more, we're just more saying more the pitch is that. too high. Well, if the answer is to drop to a 412 pitch, it significantly alters the design. I didn't say that. No, we didn't say that. 512, 612, what is it now? There's a house pitch right next now. door that's got a 12, pretty 12, steep. 1212, 1012. I mean, I don't know. It, it just. There's a house next door that's got a pretty <laughs> steep roof on it. <laughs> and the, and the proportion house. of the roof and, and elevation is, as the architects know, misleading, because you see in perspective, not elevation, but it's That's the perspective proportionally a thir two third, one third is the, is the proportion of the roof, which I feel is aesthetically more pleasing than a, some derivation of that. I don't know. That's, uh, I think the, for me, the biggest thing is that the, for this area, that the, the, the front seems uh, impersonal, no, no, doesn't open to the street at all, and there's no, the porch is kind of like just a design detail, how you can get it. There's other things you might be able to do. And, and, and I'm not, I hear what you're saying. My question would be, say, in Heritage Hills. What? In, in Heritage Hills in a colonial revival style, is that impersonal? Well, I know it's the same because there are a number of houses that have, uh, I call it the federal style, that just have basically the door and a, sometimes it doesn't even have a awning. Uh, stoop, but, stoop only. But that fits, I mean, this would fit, this would fit in that. But Heritage Hills is considered a warm, But this is not community. Heritage Hills. We have to look at this lot and what's surrounding this specific lot. But we my argument discuss. is a porch isn't going to for, this, for the exact reason that Heritage Hills is a nice street with porches, is the same reason that a porch will not create a nice, safe street on this location. I just don't feel that this one fits in the context the way it is. It would fit with a row of federal style houses. Where, to me. Yeah, we're replicating. It's not, you're yeah. not replicating. We're not talking about looking old. But we're, never, we're not talking about that. But it still needs to fit within the con still needs to fit within the context. It still needs to fit within the context. You can't say, oh, it's different. Great. For, for those that said. For those commissioners that said nay, can you point to the guideline that I <clears throat> did not meet or did not consider carefully? Well, I think, I think Heather, Heather did. did. I think it was on page 7 of 17. New standalone and infill buildings should be consistent with historical patterns of development for the property block and district. Um, guideline 4.2.2. Now, you may interpret that differently, but I think for those of us who, I, again, oh, I can only speak for myself. Well, um, actually, that, that whole section, 4.2 section, all of that applies. 4.2.3. Well, it talks about context, yep. proportion. Um, but when you look at them individually, it, I feel like you follow the guidelines. Well, it doesn't, doesn't that, we don't think. But. <laughs> I mean, you take a, you know, size, scale, proportion. That's not saying add a porch, have it be this, have it be that. It's, it's completely different. We're just kind of arguing about the same things yeah. here, though. Uh, so my question to you is, 
Do you want to no. think about it and maybe propose something else, or do you want a denial and take your chances from here? Um, so if a, a denial would be, uh, is that with prejudice or with? It could be either way, but we could just continue it for till July and let you think about it. Maybe. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I would like to keep the door open, and I, I obviously don't want to sell continue? my property. Just continue. <laughs> yes. So we can. Con <clears throat> right. Sorry. We can continue it, and let me. <coughs> it could be continued to the July sixth meeting. Um, we'll give you time to think about the comments today. Think if there are changes that you would be willing to make and or provide additional kind of backup support for supporting the design as proposed. So you could come back with more information that supports it and convince us and, you know, okay. so okay. either way. Thank you. So is there a motion to continue? Move to continue HBCA 16-00064 to the July 6th meeting. Second. Can move by Neela Craig. Uh, Clements and second by Greg Eddington. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the item is continued. A little heated, but it was kind of interesting discussion. HBCA 16 0066 at 126 Northwest 21st Street, Heritage Hills East, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application of Yanov Zimmer and Jeanette Cruz Zimmer for certificate of appropriateness to one, replace all non historic windows elective, and two, resize. Um, one existing window on West Elevation elective. The commission um, reviewed an application at this property in the, over the last couple of months and recently approved um, construction of an addition. As part of that um, remodel with the addition, they would like to resize one of the windows in the existing structure, but it's on the west side portion of the house that's being altered as part of the addition um, just to accommodate interior <coughs> use of the space. Um, and then to install uh, replacement windows where historic windows have, have previously been removed or replaced. Good afternoon. Um, well, long story short, I applied for that Are renovation of that house and adding an addition. Um, well, we did it. I didn't know that actually we're going to go and want to replace all the windows. So I'm just coming and asking for basically replacing the rest of the existing windows to the house to, to all to be new. Um, all of the windows, basically, um, the existing one are just um, a, aluminum from the 70s or 80s. Those are all in the front. Um, all of the windows are one panel, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, I'm basically adding all the windows. Right now, I'm proposing to have wood on wood um, windows. Um, I'm specifically ordering the windows without uh, brick mold or seal. I'm going to renovate on the outside of the house the existing, um, if you will see on the, on the details of the outside of the sidings and everything, we're going to keep it as, as it is. So even if there is a rotten wood or stuff, we will replace it, but we're basically just going to rebuild it to be as the existing. Um, okay. Mr. Zimber, have you looked at staff's conditions on the approval in the staff report? Yes. Okay. Do you agree? Um, it says the documentation of specific window trim components to ensure installation that maintains the historic character of the structure be submitted prior to release of CA. Yes. And okay. I thought I, I'm going to follow up with that with Katie later on, but I thought I did give all the information as the windows, even as the existing, like what was approved of the original. We, we can look back at what yeah. we already have, but I think, I mean, I think the information is there. It's sure. But yes, of course. Um, learning from the person behind that was previous um, on the Windows issues, so i just learning as we go. Um, I understand that I'm not allowed to have cloud windows in the front. But with all my approval of all the windows of the house right now, I'm submitting on a wood exterior. Would the committee going to be against me adding, uh, doing clad on the exteriors and just having wood on the front? Or 
kind of trying to learn my hmm. boundaries, what can I do and what's not right now. Because right now, all of the windows are going to be wood exterior and wood interior. But if I can do wood ex uh, clad exterior, that would be nice for actually on our maintenance for the future. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> How does that apply on? That's strange. Um, so what was proposed and what was included in the staff report is a wood window. Um, they are all uh, one over one, I believe. So we wouldn't have the, the mountain issue that we had discussed earlier. But I think if we're changing to a different window product, we would continue it to get the documentation of the product you're actually going to yeah. use. Well, uh, I don't have time. Like, it's no seriously <laughs> because that house is under construction and it's open and everything. But like, I, I don't have the time to submit. But there, the idea that even if I'm, and I ask, like I have the full representative of the window companies that I'm working with. But if I'm, I, even if I'm going to order the clad windows, because I'm keeping the brick mold and the seals, that's still going to be wood on the outside. So basically, there is not going to be any evidence of that's a cloud window beside the structure that's behind the brick mold. So I, it's not going to be much for me as well, because I'm still going to have the maintenance out there on the siding and the brick mold, but it just might be a price issue that I need to do. But if you'll say a no, then it's fine. I, I dig with it enough. Oh. So, we're back to the, what's submitted, right? Right, Good. I think so. Any more comments? How about the window, the resizing? Any? Um, the resize of the window, so this is a master bathroom window. When we did the design and everything, it's basically, we didn't, catch on it, but when we start doing the construction, we were like, oh, that's where the bathtub is coming. So we just noticed that it's actually on the height of the bathtub. So the sill is too low? The sill is at the height, yeah. So we will ask to raise it up to the window next to it, which is the toilet window, and that's becoming to the same height. So on the elevation, basically, as you can tell, the window right in front of it, which is higher, it'll be on the same height. So. Um, Remember that height of the window. I, I know the bathroom window is a 30 inch, and I think so that one is a 5.3. So. Any comments? Questions? Approval? I mean, a motion? I make a motion to approve HPCA 16000066 with the specific findings noted by staff in the staff report. Okay, so you want to add the condition as well? What? You want to add the condition to the staff? About the trim? Oh, and the conditions. The specific findings and conditions as noted by staff in the staff report. Second. Okay, so we by Joe Meacham, second by Neela Crank Clemens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, you're approved. Thank you very much. HPCA 16-00067 at 900 Northwest 22nd Street. Mesta Park, Ward 6, consideration and possible action on application at Vicki Cox, RV Cox rental by Connor Cox to, one, replace most non-historic aluminum windows with the existing openings elective, two, replace one non-historic aluminum window at smaller size for kitchen window and close remainder of opening elective, three, close one opening currently containing an aluminum window elective, four, remove and close openings of all non-historic wood windows within the rear addition elective, and five, replace all historic wood windows, elective. Okay, is the applicant present? All right. Comments? So just to confirm, the existing wood windows that we're replacing are in fact deteriorated beyond repair? Yes. I'll make a motion unless somebody has a question. Staff has um, noted to approve the specific findings and no conditions. Is that correct? I make a motion to approve HBCA 16 
with the specific findings as noted by staff in the staff report. Second. Okay, moved by Joe Meacham, second by Jeff Parks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, no nays. I thought I heard somebody say something down there. Okay, items approved. <coughs> On to other business. We have SPUD 00898 at 436 Northwest 27th Street, Jefferson Park Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application of Jack Chamberlain for Red Bar Properties, LLC, for a recommendation from the Historic Preservation Commission regarding a request to rezone from Historic Landmark Overlay District to Simplified Plan Unit Development with development occurring under R4 General Residential District, HL, and UCD zoning regulations with specific uses called out. Um, the commission reviewed a request for a variance at this property um, several months ago, and we rec the commission recommended approval of the variance, but it was ultimately denied at the Board of Adjustment, and I believe they encouraged the applicant to go back through the process and apply for an SPUD. Um, the SPUD is intended to address um, the number of units allowed for redevelopment of the property. It, it retains all of the historic preservation districts um, controls for the design review process. Um, so any work done to the exterior of the building would come back through the commission for review as prior to the SPUD. Um, this only addresses the, the uses and um, accommodation Katie, the, of the existing parking situation. The variance was for the parking? Is that what that was for? It was, um, I, I believe it was for both. It was for parking and it was for the number of units allowed. Okay. The property um, on the Sanborn maps is shown as four flats, two, two downstairs and two upstairs. It has been split up into as many as six units, but the zoning is R2. So when they go to do an interior remodel, they are required to go back to only two units, um, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense for the building. So, so I understand the number of units, but I'm, I'm thinking about the variance for the parking. If he, the applicant SPU deeds this property, they're not going to be bound by the number of parking spaces that are required for this type of structure, is that right? Right, my understanding okay. is that the SPUD essentially says the parking as included in the SPUD mm -hmm. as existing is sufficient, okay. um, because typically you'd be required to have more spaces for right. that many units. Mm -hmm. If you do a spud, you're kind of riding your own zone. I know, <laughs> I know. But you know, if this is in a residential district, it's a large building, it can accommodate eight units, there is plenty of street parking, so I don't, I don't have a problem with this. It says right, I mean, there's two bedrooms, so right now there's actually 12, 12 bedrooms. So, I mean, if there's two people per six, that's 12. It's really, it's reducing it to eight units of one. Yeah. So, Helps. statistic, I mean, it would seem like there'd actually be less people parking in eight units than the current, well, possibly. It is adjacent to R4, directly behind it, so it's not like it's totally appropriate so anybody want to make a motion to recommend this I this? move that um, I need to hold on before you make a motion it still says recommend approval to Board of Adjustment and you're actually recommending to Planning Commission ah, and City Council okay. this is the correct SPUD number then but, yes. yeah because it'd be different for the variance okay I move um, that the Commission recommend approval to the Planning Commission for the SPUD 898 with the specific findings listed in Section E of the staff recommendation. Second. Second. Okay, to move by Neela Crank Clements, second by Ann Zacherts. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It goes fourth. Eight. Communications and reports. Okay, we have a presentation, which I will do very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Host by you. <laughs> yes. I think we have it. Yes, you're done. You're recommended for approval. So it'll move on to oh, the next step. With the spud? He's one of the owners. Sorry. One of the owners. Okay. You're done. 
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, unless you want to come and talk later, that's fine. We can argue about that house again. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, so we've mentioned in several workshops um, that we've been working on this um, traditional, it's had various names, but traditional neighborhood overlay that is intended to be um, kind of an interim, not interim, but a, a middle ground between standard residential or any other type of base zoning that has no design review process whatsoever, and then the upper level of historic preservation and other design review districts. So this is what we've developed at this point. We're going to kind of our last couple of um, meetings with neighborhood representatives and then we'll start taking it through um, the process for adoption as an amendment to chapter 59 of the um, municipal code. Um, and just wanted to, we're gonna kind of present it to some different design review bodies, wanted to make all of you aware of it and we're also doing a public meeting about this on May 9th that you should have all gotten an invitation to. <clears throat> we started well over a year ago talking with various neighborhood representatives about some kind of protection for neighborhoods that have a traditional character, um, historic character, um, that are seeing transition or have a lot of empty lots on what gets built back in those areas, changes that get made to those homes, but neighborhoods that maybe wouldn't um, have the level of historic integrity or wouldn't have the owner support to go for historic preservation zoning. Um, started looking at what other cities use for tools to um, address those kinds of issues and analyze those different programs and then began meeting with neighborhood representatives earlier this spring to talk about um, some, some options. Uh, you can go to the next one. So, the way it has been, um, what we came up with and what we've kind of settled on at this point, it, we've coined it um, saving the bones, that it would affect review only of work that requires a building permit. So lots of changes could be made to a structure that don't require a building permit, and those would be allowed to go forward without any kind of a review process. But more significant changes that can really alter the character of a street um, new construction, demolitions, additions, um, adding a front porch where there was none, removing a front porch, those kinds of structural things, changes to the size of openings, additions of new openings would go through a review process. Right now it's drafted so that nearly everything could be administratively approved and we've tried to write it in a way that it's very black and white and very objective. Um, it's drafted so that things that staff couldn't approve would go to Urban Design Commission, kind of as rather than appealing straight to Board of Adjustment, that would be the review body. Um, so the first step alters their ordinance that establishes Urban Design Commission to give them the ability to review something like that. Um, and then if you go to the next one. Um, so purpose and intent um, intended to facilitate continued growth and revitalization of structures, sites, and districts that embody unique historic and architectural character or represent the development patterns of traditional neighborhoods and districts of Oklahoma City. This is intended to provide oversight for projects with the potential to significantly alter the character of districts um, and ensure that new construction does not detract from the district's character. So the right now it's being created as a, a hypothetical tool. It's a, a zoning overlay that could be applied somewhere but is not being applied anywhere right now. It's just to get the tool into the ordinance and then a, a, a neighborhood or an area or you know, various property owners could apply to have that zoning overlay applied on their neighborhood. Um, similar to HP, it could be initiated by City Council, by Planning Commission, by the Urban Design Commission, or by a majority of the property owners within the defined area. Um, is that and, the same process for HP, more or less? Yes. Yeah. So HP, um, a neighborhood could get owner support from a majority of the property owners and initiate their own application to be rezoned, um, or it can be initiated by various elected appointed officials. Um, already mentioned, but CA would only be required for work that requires a permit. Um, most items would 
potentially qualify for administrative approval, and there are more exemptions for things that are in backyards, defines ordinary maintenance and repair similarly to our existing design review districts. Um, the guidelines are split into four sections for existing structures, new construction, um, paving, and demolition. Um, existing structures, fairly similarly to HP, emphasizes um, referencing what's already there, the character of the, ex the existing building, establishes um, criteria for where an addition can go, how large an addition can be, um, and also recognizes, similarly to our HP guidelines, that there may be existing non-contributing, non-traditional buildings within a district where you aren't necessarily going to require them to retain every aspect of that building. Um, for uh, guidelines for new construction, also similar to ours, talk about height, setback, um, incorporating similar forms and features that you see within the street face and kind of sets a boundary of the same street, the same side of the street within the block to reference those properties. Um, also talks about how you would design a structure, for instance, this was brought up by some of our neighborhood representatives, if you were building a commercial property in a neighborhood where there had been neighborhood commercial structures but none were left um, to use as a reference point what you could base those on, and also addresses garages, carports, um, fencing only in front yards, and those were concerns for neighborhoods that we talked to. Um, paving similarly talks about retaining established patterns for things like driveways, things like um, parking in the instance of a commercial area, um, limiting paving in front yards to the extent that that work requires a permit. And then the guidelines for demolition are the same criteria that were recently adopted for all of the other design districts other than HP. Um, the only change that was made to those was all of those reference urban character and because this is anticipated to maybe be applied more in residential settings, we um, changed that definition to meet what's in the Oklahoma City Municipal Code definitions already for character in general, not urban. Um, so if we move forward as, as Paula has so carefully mapped out for us, um, we, it would go to our, the public meeting that I mentioned on May 9th, go back to Urban Design Commission, for their review um, May 25th, and then go through the three planning commission meetings, um, June, July, and then city council. Katie, this is just to recommend get the overlay accepted, but not as uh, um, not as far as where which neighborhoods this overlay would then. Right, and right now we're not making a recommendation or anything. It was just to kind of update everybody on where we're at to this point with the process. And right, when it goes through, it'll just be like creating, we have historic preservation. We have. Um, be another overlay. It'd be another overlay right. tool that could right. be used, but it won't be applied in any particular place. And so Urban Design Commission was selected to be the oversight body because the level of scrutiny is more in line with what they review rather than what we review. So there were several things. I think that was um, one of the issues that felt like the, the, yeah, kind of the level of discretion or the level of detail-orientedness mm -hmm. was comparable. Um, they also already work with multiple sets of guidelines. Um, they work with downtown guidelines for, for one district. They use different um, criteria. They see residential and commercial. And they also just have, from a practical standpoint, a much lighter caseload. Then That's what I was going to say. So I wasn't looking for body. more, more, more stuff, <laughs> but I think that there, there are a, lo a lot of reasons why it fits with our commission, too. I, I absolutely um, agree. So yeah. I'm trying to kind of understand yeah. the reasoning behind that. Yeah. I think yeah. we have way more cases than they do. No, I, I, I know that we do, yes. <laughs> yeah, what was that number? We've, we've you know, I, I mean, this in um, a lot of ways is very much a preservation tool, and a, a lot of cities fit this within the preservation bucket. All of our design districts in other cities would potentially be considered preservation, you know, within the umbrella of preservation. Um, I think there was some care taken with this because people often put preservation in such a fine little um, 
Definitely. category of, yes, the, the level of um, historic significance that a district has to have to, to even be considered historic, um, the level of scrutiny it goes through, um, the level of just kind of integrity of the district that the idea for this was to make it open to more neighborhoods, that your neighborhood doesn't have to be 100 plus years old. It doesn't have to have all of its historic windows still intact. Is this, some, of ours do that, but. Is this something that, uh, say, Jefferson Park might have considered? They're not a historic they're, preservation district. They're an urban. No. Jefferson is HL oh, overlay. H, HL, not there, HL. There are a lot of similarities with the urban conservation district overlay from the aspects of that that touch on design review. Um, it's not a clean trade because each urban conservation district has its own set of guidelines and they cover mm -hmm. all sorts of things beyond design review. The one we laughed about is one of them talks about who can and cannot have a horse um, within the overlay. Um, so we didn't go into any of those kinds of things, but a lot of the design based um, well, things I, in UCD. It seems like I remember related. when that came up that they were looking for something not quite as strong as, I don't know. I don't know. This, would, this would be a more of a conservation preservation, but not as historic. What would yeah. happen Warning. when, uh, like, let's say Gatewood is is, you know, it's areas that actually would um, qualify to be historic district, mm -hmm. but then are named this. Have you all have you discussed that? So yeah, I mean, I think for you know. 20, 30 years ago, uh, several of our neighborhoods that are now HP first adopted the Urban Conservation District overlay and then Later took the on. next step to be HP. So I think it could be a stepping stone for some neighborhoods that maybe currently can't get enough owners to buy in to doing HP zoning, um, but would at least protect some element of the neighborhood as a, as a neighborhood maybe is going through a transition and that maybe then moves on to the next level of regulation. So do you feel like there's anything in there that would be allowed that um, would later come back to? Uh, I mean, there absolutely is. There are many things in this that keep me up late at night and wake <laughs> me up at 2 in the morning. Um, and But I think in talking about developing this tool, we felt like if there's a spectrum from no regulation to the level of regulation we see with HP, it has to be far enough from each end to be worth doing. That there has to be some level of restrictiveness or why even bother. But if it's too close to HP, just use HP and don't create a whole new tool. So um, you can replace all your windows without a building permit. You know, you can replace your doors and um, do all sorts of things that really dramatically alter the appearance of a structure without any kind of building permits and therefore without going through this review process. But the, the intent is with the save the bones is that the, the structure of the building would still be there. And if and when someone else came in and said, you know, I'm going to put back wood windows that are historically appropriate to the house, or I'm going to go back to the siding material that would have been on the house historically, um, that that's still possible in the future so would this be for uh, such as the cottage district um i think that ship may have sailed for gone. cottage <laughs> districts particularly what, what <laughs> although cottages? i mean There's maybe, no cottages left yeah, maybe 10 there. years from now they'll want it for the modern houses you know <laughs> right i mean they could develop their own like the neighborhood change the name of that. yeah but see that's what i brought up a couple of years ago about the cottage districts we have the contemporary architecture but we have some Stunning examples of bungalows. There are a few in there. Yeah, Not many. But yeah. And then yeah. there's the dilapidated structures. It seems like this would be ideal for something like that for somebody that wants to preserve their cottage with the right windows and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. And then we've got this contemporary thing going on. And it's kind of like the Louvre Museum and the IMP Pyramid. Yeah. I mean, that's I like that myself. I mean, he, how does the demolition part of it read? I mean. Would it be very strict or? So it's, it's written fairly similarly to ours, except in ours, you have to check one of the three boxes. It has to either be not historic, beyond repair, or economic feasibility, which I forget that one. Um, for the, the other design districts and for this, it's more of a, a weighing of those factors and they could kind of 
Do they ever say no? Um, <laughs> there have been many things, that, and they have different rules on continuances, so there have been things that have been continued and just never come back. Um, since they've had uh, the new criteria in place just since the, chain, the start of the year, um, I'd actually have to ask our other design review staff if they've had one come in that's been denied. But not as much as us. I don't want to belabor the, 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 the cottage district area, but if you take a little trip <laughs> down to 9th Street trip. or 8th Street, there is a bungalow that has now been added onto in the back so that it looks like a contemporary home. So it's a hodgepodge. I, I, don't, I don't know. I think there needs to be some guidance to those types of structures. I, I don't know. My opinion. That's what we'll try to do. Okay, any more comments on the uh, Katie's presentation? Not administrative approvals, a bunch of them. Turn the page, keep turning. Withdrawals, minutes, and closures. City Council. Again, welcome Suzanne. Um, oh. And we also reappointed Neela and George, so thank you for welcome back. continuing with us. And on to H National Register nomination. Um, this was just a report that at the, oh, so under Board of Adjustment, we should have listed our, our approval of the four car garage last month is being appealed. That will go to a Board of Adjustment likely on June 2nd. And it's being appealed by the uh. Uh, neighboring property owner. So we'll keep you posted on the outcome of that. Um, we had three National Register nominations that HP Commission had recommended that SHPO has forwarded on to the keeper of the National Register. So that happened the last couple of weeks. And then I ad think hoc. we might have an ad hoc committee <laughs> to identify potential landmarks, a couple of things. Where? Today? Yeah. <laughs> Is it right here? <laughs> <laughs> Is it Joe? What would you like us to do, Katie? <laughs> well, how are we supposed to um, propose these? So um, a commission member could ask to initiate that initiation of HL designation be put on the agenda for the next meeting for, um, I think, the, the two properties. And then is somebody making a motion to approve that? So that's just a no. request from just a request the commission. From yep. commission. And then we'll put it on the agenda next time. Okay. Well, I would like to request the initiation of the HL status for the Sieber apartments owned by the town builders. And the uh, milk bottle. What? Milk bottle building? What? Okay. And the milk bottle building. News to you. <laughs> Thought everybody was going to get to take a turn. Okay, great. Sorry, we didn't coordinate that very well. <laughs> okay, excellent. I assume the owners are receptive to that. If anybody else has recommendations or knows people that they think that, because we've had kind of two, we have two responses going on here. We have those that don't want it because they think maybe when they sell it, that it would limit the ability to do something and others who want to preserve it as part of their legacy. So we're after the legacy type. Right. Thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So if anybody has a suggestion, let, do you have a committee? Is it, yep. Is or you can just, Neela? it's, it's, yeah, Joe, Neela, Heather. Heather, Heather um, okay. And you can, you know, if there's someone that you think we should talk to, just email me or give me a call and we'll. Katie has instructed us that we, we can't do a lot at one time because it takes a lot of effort. <laughs> we have time. to actually create a Not staff report for it. Not that she doesn't want to make the effort, yeah. but so we're trying to maybe do. Do some batches. Yeah. Do some, yeah. <laughs> okay. Munici Jay, municipal council or anything? Okay. <laughs> okay, next meeting date. The next regular schedule, scheduled meeting for the Historic Preservation Commission is Wednesday, May 25th at 2 p.m. And they're turning the lights off. New application meeting were received April 26. New information from today <coughs> continued from on projects and continued from today's <coughs> meeting to the upcoming meeting shall be submitted to staff by 4 p.m. Tuesday, May 31st. Uh, to the next regularly scheduled workshop for the Historic Preservation Commission is Wednesday, June 8th, from 11:30 to 1:30 at 420 West Main, Suite 900. <coughs> X any I X items from commissioners? Anything? Okay, citizens to be heard. There's nobody. 
So we're adjourned. Thank you. If you want to argue about that house some more, you can stick around. Thank you.